the magic moment is here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's football time in Tennessee. Four seconds to go in the football game. Gregory to snap, Scott to hold, Hall to kick. The kick by Hall is in the air. It's high enough, it's long enough. Is it straight enough? Yes, sir, Reed. And the Gators with the field goal made will tie the game. Snap, the kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no, sir, Reed. No, sir, Reed. Against a five-man front by Houston. And off goes up the middle. This will be Jamal Lewis. He breaks a tackle. This is Lewis to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Jamal Lewis. As rolling to the left side, hoping to throw, but he is dumped. The fumble is picked up by Tennessee, and the Volunteers have Sean Ellis running with the football down the left side, looking for blocking. This will be Sean Ellis still running, struggling at the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He made it! He made it! This is Travis Henry as the running back. This is Martin. Faking, looking, pass into the end zone is... Give it to him. Touchdown! Cedric Wilson! It will be Henry. He will dive. He will drive. He will score for the Big Orange. Henry all the way. Could we say it? Oh, Henry. Martin out of the shotgun waits for the snap. Looking into the end zone. Pass is complete for a touchdown. Peerless Price. Wherever you listen, ladies and gentlemen, at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Everybody and welcome to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Today, the University of Tennessee takes on the University of Alabama, Birmingham, as the Vols try to remain undefeated. And with me is Tim Priest. Of course, Tim was a captain of the Tennessee team. In fact, he played against Watson Brown, the head coach at UAB. Bob, I surely did back in the late 60s when Watson was a quarterback at Vanderbilt. And looking forward to today's game against his UAB team, a game that ought to be fun for the Tennessee players and exciting for the fans to watch. Well, Tennessee is a heavy favorite today, 42 points as a matter of fact. But the way the computers work, you've got to match that at least and better it perhaps, but we'll see. You do, and nothing UAB would like better than to play the role of a giant killer today. Well, I don't think you can take anything for granted in college football today, and I'm sure that Phil Fulmer and the staff have hammered that home all week. Going into the South Carolina game, Coach Fulmer was somewhat concerned about his offense. It was very important uh, going into the football game. We expected... Uh, as we've gotten a lot this year for them to load up on the run and try to stop the run and South Carolina was pretty darn good up front and uh, we felt like we had to get the ball on the perimeter had to throw the ball down the field to loosen the defense and us to have some success offensively Sweet against South Carolina all over the field set a new NCAA record 23 straight in uh, completions that's his second touchdown to Jermaine Copeland. The first one was to Cedric Wilson, and he spread the ball all over the field. As you can see here, hitting Peerless Price in the flat, turns on the burners, outruns South Carolina. Martin's com coming of age has really turned the Tennessee season to make, make them a true contender now, it looks like, Bob, for the playoffs. He got a lot of confidence, especially in the uh, second half of the play. Band down on the field now, performing, and we're just minutes away from kickoff. Here are some of T's records, consecutive completions, 23. In one game, 23, and percentage, 95.8 is pretty good, I would say. Coach uh, Phil Fulmer has some comments on the Tennessee defense. Thank you, uh, we have played a lot of people all year long, but Tad Golden got his first uh, real game experience at safety and did a, did a nice job for us. And, 
And I just want our kids, when they go into the game, first or second team, to be, well, second team was a problem, to be accountable and get people stopped. You know, we gave up half the offense that they got nearly and two touchdowns with a second unit. I didn't particularly like that. Getting a look at Tennessee's defense last week against South Carolina. Solid all day, caused fumbles. Uh, uh, here's the first one, D'Angelo Lloyd caused, putting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, when they needed to, playing good, solid defense in the secondary. Dwayne Goodrich, terrific interception late in the first half. Blocked a field goal. I believe that was Billy Ratliff. Played well against the option. Dominique Stevenson, just a good, solid defensive performance all around last week. Well, it was indeed, and uh, the defense has been walking with a swagger, according to Coach uh, Watson Brown. Game one against uh, Syracuse, they allowed in that one, of course, uh, 33 points. And that perhaps was not as bad as we thought at the time defensively, Tim, because Syracuse, as it turns out, has gotten very, very good. They surely have, Bob. Donovan McNabb played a great football game against Tennessee, and I think we all wondered a little bit, does Tennessee defense have it that day? Did they really have it? They mm -hmm. came so close so many times to getting him, but as it's gone the last six football games, they're only allowing 11 points. They've given up the least number of touchdowns of any school in the SEC and played great run defense all season. Of course, every time Syracuse wins, it helps Tennessee now in the bowl coalition situation. We, we've got strange bedfellows this yes, year. That's exactly <laughs> right. Actually, you're having to cheer for Florida right now, Tennessee fans uh, are. I'm not sure I, that, that most fans <laughs> could bring themselves to do that, but it really would help them in, in the uh, bowl coalition or, well, the, or the bowl championship series. Arkansas is coming in here next week, and they will come in undefeated. They have just defeated Ole Miss 34 to nothing, and actually that helps Tennessee because Arkansas now will move up a notch or two probably to eighth or ninth in the nation so uh, another plus but of course you got to take care of Arkansas when they get here next week. Very true I'm sure the Tennessee players and coaches have UAB on their mind right now but one thing you want to do is, is set the stage for the stretch run down the SEC and I can absolutely guarantee you that Tennessee's players and coaches full attention after this ball game will be on Arkansas after the way they demolished Ole Miss today. Well it was an impressive performance and it came in a very cold windy rain situation over there in Fayetteville today. It didn't seem to affect the hogs at all as they performed quite well and of course they'll be here next week and that's a 3:30 kickoff next week. Week, Eastern time, 2.30 Central time. University of Tennessee band on the field. Very soon they will form the T and then we'll see the University of Tennessee volunteers and the UAB team is down to our right, ready to race onto the field. Watson Brown, of course, is a native of Tennessee from Cookville and played at Vanderbilt and played uh, against uh, Tim Priest. Bobby, he actually scored a couple of touchdowns. He won the game, though, right? He did. Uh, Watson has always been very innovative uh, as, as a college quarterback, and he's been to Tennessee to play as a Vanderbilt player, as a Mississippi State coach, and now as head coach at UAB. He'll throw a lot of things at Tennessee today. You're going to see some wishbone. You're going to see some, some sets offensively where he has four and five wide outs, uh, a, a varied offense uh, to try to attack Tennessee's defense. Tennessee players know they have to score and win impressively. T. Martin and Steve Johnson comment. Uh, it gives us something to reach for. You know, we went up in the polls, the number two, now we're number three, and, and felt that we should have been higher, and that gave us something to reach for, and we keep on getting better. You know, every college player wants to be on the best team and play in the best game to see if they were the best team, so that's what we're reaching for. We want to play in the big game, and uh, we're trying to avoid a letdown, that's, and that calls for practicing hard every week and uh, to keep on getting better. I don't think just getting a win is impressive. As you can see, you know, last week with UCLA against a 1-6 and six Stanford team, uh, you definitely got to be impressive with, you know, the new system. And uh, it's just sad that, you know, you can go out and win and be undefeated, but, you know, your, your ranking is determined by a computer. So, you know, the, the technology age is in, I guess. All right, Coach Phil Fulmer and the Tennessee Vols poised and ready to take the field against the Blazers of the University of Alabama, Birmingham. The winningest active coach in the game today, 84%. 
and he has silenced the critics this year if there were any and of course the criticism was over the Florida game and that's been taken care of Tim. It surely has Bob and and you know this is a football game Tennessee's heavily favored to win but they've almost got to win uh, by a big margin to keep their position in the bowl championship series. Well there's coach uh, Watson Brown putting on his headset. He's been here many times and they've all been unsuccessful. All right, here's a familiar scene, one of the more exciting moments in college football. The Volunteers of Tennessee. Well, some folks might have wondered if we would have a full house today with the Vols being heavily favored. Well, of course, it's homecoming. That attracts some extra fans. But as I look around the big stadium, the big house, I see no empty seats. Bob, I think the Tennessee fans are especially enamored of this team and the way they've per performed all season above expectations many weeks. And everybody that gets a chance to come see them play, they're coming. They are indeed. And, of course, the... Next three games, the final three are all Southeastern Conference games. After Arkansas, Kentucky comes in here, and then the Vols wind it up the regular season on the road in Nashville to take on Vanderbilt. All three of those games are dangerous. Yes, even the Vanderbilt, remember the last two years, it's been an almost heartbreak city. The Vols had to fight like crazy to pull it out. And, of course, we know about the shootout last year between Manning and Couch in Kentucky, and we probably will see the same kind of air show when uh, they come in here. And Arkansas can do it both. They can run and they can throw. As you heard, the Vols elect to receive. So UAB will be kicking off here. And the Vols will put their offense into gear right away. Great performance last week by the offense and especially T. Martin against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Let's see if that carries over here. Bob, I don't think you're going to see a UAB team that's intimidated by the large crowd. They opened the season at Nebraska, played very well. They were only down 24 to 7 with two minutes to go before Nebraska scored a couple of late touchdowns. So this team's been on the road in some big ballparks before. Lost in four overtimes to Kansas. They've won a couple of football games. They've got two remaining, and ironically, they're against Tennessee schools also. So they beat Tennessee Tech earlier, got the Vols today, close it out against MTSU and UT Martin. So they will have played four teams from the street of Tennessee. Peerless Price will drop back to receive the kick from Lee Carter. The shadow of the press box has now totally covered the football field, and some of the fans in the sunshine across the way. It has been unfortunate for them up until this game, but it's rather chilly here today, so they got the prize seats today in the sunshine. A nice crisp afternoon, a great day for a game. There's a shadow of the press box engulfing the field. And actually, it's from a broadcast standpoint, it's good. <laughs> Rather than having that bright sunshine on the orange and white jerseys. Here's the kick, and this one is underway. It's a low one. It'll bounce and be picked up by Peerless Price. Across the 15, stutter steps, gets out across the 25 to the 27-yard line, where the balls will put it in play against UAB. Tennessee didn't quite have their timing on, on the return there. The, the, the bounce, the slow bounce of the ball threw their timing off just a little bit and caused uh, Peerless not quite to get to the wall in time. T. Martin, last three games, you see, been excellent. Comes out with wide outs at the bottom of your screen. Two back set. Man in motion. He hands it off to his tailback. He's looking for room and he's got some. Travis Stevens stumbling. A midfield and out of bounds right at the midfield mark, I think, by a face mask. Flag down and it looks to be a face mask. And we'll add on another at least five to this play. Looks like a flagrant face mask. 23 yards on the carry. Personal foul. Grasping the face mask. 
against the defense, 15 yard penalty. First down. It's the big one, actually. He brought him down. By Good shot of T behind his quarterback Riley sends a man in motion once again fakes it to his tailback rolls out wants to throw does throw complete Cedric Wilson. Young one back there is Platt, true freshman. Pass incomplete intended for Peerless Price down the sideline. Led him a little too far. Pretty well covered on that one. He was. Nice play by their cornerback. Kind of forced uh, Peerless out of bounds or right up the boundary and threw Tennessee's timing off. Tennessee will use, uh, we think, the package and running. And we should see. If everything goes according to form, a number of the second and third teamers in there. Tennessee dressed 138 players today. About 130 of them may play. Here's a delay to Stevens at tailback. Gets a little bit of running room in the middle. There's Smith on the bottom of the pile along with Jeter. Pretty big team there. Davis certainly fills out the uniform quite well. He does. Davis and, and uh, Jeter both are about 300 pounds. Uh, Jeter's kind of a fire plug at 5'11", but they give him two pretty good inside defenders. 40% on third down conversions, Tennessee is. Probably would like to improve that just a little bit. Tease in the pocket, got time. Rolls out, throws a little high. Incomplete to Peerless Price. <laughs> James Williams left cornerback broke it up. Nice coverage that time. Uh, there's plenty of protection for T, but he just can't quite find anybody open. Nice coverage. Goes back. Nice play by Williams, the left cornerback, to get there, time it and get there just in time to knock the ball free. All right, Jeff Hall is going to attempt a field goal. It'll be spotted at the 28, making it a 38-yard effort here. Got a pretty good angle on it. All time best at Tennessee. It's up. It looks good. It is good. Tennessee breaks on top three to nothing here on homecoming 1998. Bob, nice to see Jeff Hall get back in, in the groove. He missed a couple of kicks uh, against Alabama. Uh, that he will have this year. Fortunately for the Vols, they didn't really need him that day, but uh, in the games they've needed him, he's been terrific. Well for him and, and the respect that he has from the other players on the football team, uh, I agree. Most of the time you come to practice, but they do with Jeff Hall. That drive, uh, six plays, 56 yards, 142 on the uh, time of the drive. And officially it's a 39-yard field goal for Jeff Hall. All right, UAB goes on offense now after the defense did a decent job in stopping Tennessee from getting into the end zone. So they had to go to the field goal. Don't necessarily want to do that. It means you're running too many back, but uh, he's pretty good at it. He averages over 24 yards a return, number 20. Wind is not a factor. The flags are rather limp around the stadium right now, so Jeff will not be aided by or hindered by any wind. He gets his kick away. It's kind of short by his standards at the 10-yard line. It's fielded. 
UAB trying to break outside and they do a good job of it up to almost the 40 yard line before going out of bounds is Cedric Thatch 25 yards on the return Tennessee has had some problems Tim on kick returns this year not the strong suit and th that kick was a little short and they didn't really quite get there on the coverage all right UAB with operating at quarterback here they'll take on the Tennessee defense Daniel Dixon Dixon is pretty good sized guy six foot two 195 pounds got an eye back situation hands it to his tailback and he gets stuffed after a yard and a half maybe Lucius Foster is the uh, tailback Foster, Nice play by Westmoreland coming in from outside linebacker to make the hit for a short game. Foster's 185 pounder. Five foot ten. Just about the perfect size for a college tailback. Trying to spread Tennessee a little bit it looks like Bob yep. early. They're spread way out. Alec. Come off right tackle with a pretty good play that time. Uh, Corey Conley, the fullback, carried the ball with a lot of motion. Jeff Coleman made the uh, stop. There's a look at the backs and receivers. Foster, the tailback, who's a decent runner. Fullback Conley not only runs pretty well, he's a pretty good blocker as well. The offensive line got some big guys up there, headed by Preston Frey, Melvin Sidney. Frey has certainly felt to be an SEC caliber offensive lineman, and we're going to get a look at him here. Short yardage. All right. Tennessee defense trying to dig in and prevent UAB's first first down here. They need about two. I'm not sure. It looks like they perhaps have it. It's Connolly from fullback carrying right up the middle, and Al Wilson, the middle linebacker, made the stop for. Tennessee Tennessee's defense Ellis Coleman Walker and Terry they play a lot of people up front though Tennessee's been playing about 11 linebackers very active very good headed by Wilson of course Raynox had a super year and the defensive backs Deion Grant and Dwayne Goodrich probably at their position as good as anybody in the country right now line up in a wishbone this time Nothing happens positive for the Blazers. Tim, I don't know what his idea was there. I think perhaps he just missed the handoff. He, he's trying to read that defensive end, and the defensive end came down, and, and Sean Ellis and actually took the fullback, the dive back, and the quarterback on that play. He took them both and made a terrific play, disrupted it, and gave them about a three-yard loss. Tim referred to uh, Watson's offensive mind. He's his own offensive coordinator, and he will run the conventional option, the wishbone spread, which he's doing right now. Two at the bottom of the screen, one receiver at the top, and now some confusion on the part of UAB. They call a timeout as the quarterback comes over, Daniel Dixon, to talk with Watson Brown. We're kind of getting a look, uh, Bob, at, at Watson Brown's offensive mind early. We've seen a wishbone set where they ran a straight wishbone option on the last play. They've run a, a dive option off of an eye play with a man in motion, and they've had three wide outs to one side. So he's, he's mixed it up early on Tennessee. Well, he has been known to do that. Coaching stints, of course, at Vanderbilt, also at Rice, Cincinnati. His brother doing quite nicely right now at the University of Texas. He surely is. Uh, Mac played with Watson at, at uh, Vanderbilt, I believe a year behind Watson. Both of them are Cookville uh, natives and uh, ha have had uh, a lot of success in uh, college coaching. Of course, Mac moved over from North Carolina to take over the Texas job and is doing uh, very well. Again, earlier today, Arkansas defeated Ole Miss by a score of 34 to nothing. I'll admit that surprised me. They were a nine-point favorite. I thought Ole Miss might at least beat the line. Might be a very close ball game. I, I did, too. They, they, Ole Miss has played everybody tough all season, but in the rain over at uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas uh, really handled them and sets up a, a huge match next week. That will be a CBS game with two unbeatens. All right. Ready to go. Here is Dixon handing off in the middle. Nice hole. 
Tailback slides up to the 50 yard line. Lucius Foster and Raynock Thompson made the stop for Tennessee. Nice job by Raynock staying staying home here. It's a reverse action off the off the option coming back. Tennessee's outmanned, but Raynock man manages to get free. Getting a look, another look at it here. Nice play coming off the blocker. Third and seven. They're trying, I think, to get Tennessee to overreact, uh, Tim. Definitely. They're coming with three wide outs to one side now. Four, excuse me. Four wide outs, and out of that they run and get very, very little. Uh, Dar <laughs> Darwin Walker. A Steve Spurrier-esque formation, <laughs> but not the results he usually gets at Florida. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> Quarterback, quarterback draw. Quarterback draw. Walker stayed home. They split four wide outs to one side of the field and one to the other. Didn't work. Got some help from uh, Creel, his teammate, in going down there. Lee Carter back to punt. Longest of the year, 52 yards. An interesting story. He drove the equipment truck to Nebraska first game, and now he's promoted all the way to be the punter on this team. They've had a little kicking trouble this That's, year. That is quite a story. Eric Parker back to receive for Tennessee. Check that. It's Dion Grant. And he's calling for a fair catch. He wanted it to bounce into the end zone. It did not. Maybe the fair catch should have been made because UAB does a great job of downing it at about the three yard line. A 46 yard kick I by the truck driver. I doubt Lee Carter's going to drive that equipment truck again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's going to ride on the front seat. Nice kick that time. Got, got Tennessee backed up. Be interesting to see what they do to try to come off the goal line. First quarter, you see, 9.15 to go. Tennessee on their first drive at its stall. Tried a 39-yard field goal, which was successful. UAB unable to get into scoring territory, but they have pinned Tennessee deep with the punt. Travis Henry is operating at tailback right now. He alternates with Travis Stevens. They hand it off to Sean Bryson, the fullback, who tried to pop it out of there and couldn't find much running room. Defense closed it down nicely for UAB after about a yard. Bob, you're seeing Tennessee use some motion. David Cutcliffe does that. Uh, you see the motion here coming right up the middle is, is Bryson. Not much room, but Tennessee uses that motion to see what kind of adjustments the defense will make, and then that'll tell David how he wants to attack them as the ball game goes along with or without motion. Line pushed off nicely, but the uh, linebackers, middle linebacker, filled it up. Here's the handoff to Henry. He's got some room, and he's up and across the 15-yard line. Travis Henry, James Williams, cornerback, had to make the stop for the Blazers. It moves the chains, first and 10 for Tennessee. Good shot of Mr. Travis Henry there. You see a better shot of him here. Cozy Coleman, Jarvis Rito, and Will Bartholomew open a huge hole on the right side. Big to come off the, the goal line with a first down. And a yard beyond that, 11 yard run. T. Martin takes a look at that defense. Gives it off to Henry, who's trying to turn the corner and can't quite do it. UAB did a nice job pursuing on the side that time, led by Chris Neal, the safety, strong safety. Tennessee's counter trade didn't work. The pursuit caught up with them before they could get on the corner that time. You're seeing, you're seeing the, the backside guard pull to lead, but the pursuit comes down the line very well defensively. Nice play. Good block by Bryson on his man. Tennessee fullbacks block extremely well, all three of them. T. Martin fakes a reverse, gives it off to the and he rambles to the 30 and a yard beyond. Travis Henry is a load. He is a tough man to bring down. He's listed at 212. But I'm told he's more like 220, and at 510, that's that, that's a that's a pretty tough. Nice lead again. You got the whole right side of the line, and Henry, tough guy to bring down. 13 yards on the run. They talk about upper body strength. In his case, it's lower body strength. Tremendous leg power. Seven minutes to go in this quarter. The first one, homecoming, 98. Takes one way. 
This is the other. Got a man out there on the side. Almost got away. Peerless Price. Two string tackle got him or he would have been in the end zone. He ran one of those all the way against South Carolina. This covers 14 yards. CT start to the left, turn and throw the quick screen back. Touch. And they're just a hair from breaking it all the way. Good lead block by Jarvis Rito. They seem to like uh, running Rito right now. The most talented of the Tennessee offensive linemen, uh, Cozy Coleman, and he's only a sophomore. First down and 10 to go. They give it off to the big guy again, and he churns for a couple. Drags a player with him there, Curtis Jeter. And Jeter's 290 pounds, so that gives you an idea of the strength of Henry's leg power. It becomes second down and seven for the Volunteers. Over six minutes to go here in the first quarter. Full house homecoming. The old grads are back. One of them sitting here by me, Tim Priest. <laughs> Young grad. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Balls leading three to nothing. Certainly like to add to that. Martin, nice fake and a nice throw. Even a better catch by Peerless Price. The throw was a little low, but Price went down and got it. Of course, is one of the top receivers in the country. It covered 13 yards. T looks like he's in a rhythm again. He really looks nice standing in. This tough throw takes a good arm to be able to make that throw. It's a skill pass, a deep sideline cut, and he just looks like he's back in the rhythm that he's been in the last three or four ball games. It's one of those passes you cannot intercept, so only the receiver has a chance at it low and away. Like a Randy Johnson glider. As T whistles blow, we might have had movement. Or there might have been a timeout. T heads to the sideline real quick. I guess that's the case. No flag is down. So T just decided he needed to talk with the uh, offensive coordinator, David Cutcliffe, who's up here in the booth. But sends the information down through Randy Sanders. Tennessee per game average. First four games, you see, and then the last three. Gives you an idea of the progression of the University of Tennessee and what they have been able to achieve. And it's it's been a team that has been very stable in virtually every quarter they have played, especially after the uh, first game. Great leadership that is evident. Great job by the coaching staff. And a, a very level-headed team without, since Jamal is not out there right now, without a real superstar. Peerless Price, of course, is a star and several others, but I'm talking about the magnitude of a Peyton Manning. They are without that type of player, but still, in many cases, a lot of people, Tim, feel that's good. They're playing as a team. Well, they, everybody knows they got to pull their weight. They can't count on somebody else to, to do it for them. And the maturity of T. Martin, I think, is reflected in those numbers we had on the screen. Uh, let's see what they do now coming out. They've got a nice drive going coming off the goal line. Eighth play of the drive. There's Peerless trying to keep those valuable hands warm. He'll no doubt be back in shortly. Here's the fake to the tailback and then a rollout. Nice play. Sean Bryson, the fullback, is all the way down to almost the 25 yard line before he has knocked out of bounds. Everything about that looked good. The fake was good. The throw was good. The run was good. Covered 16 yards. Nice bootleg. Nice bootleg. Sean Bryson's number. Hi there. Watch T give a good fake. Stay with it a little bit. Comes out on the bootleg. Goes to Bryson who had ideas of cutting back and uh, instead of punishing got a little punishment at the end of it. Here's the big guy rambling in the middle again down across the 20 to the 18 yard line. Wes Foss free safety drags him down. Travis Henry alternating with Travis Stevens. Actually they're co starters according to the coach. Tennessee again likes running behind Rito and Coleman and they're they're pulling Hamilton the left guard around to lead the play but they, they keep pounding the right side of the offensive line. Let's see if they try to pound it in from here. They give it to Henry once again. This one will be is a touchdown, Tennessee. 
18 yards on the run by Travis Henry. Once he broke the line, there was quite evident to the 100,000 plus here that no one was going to stop him. Tennessee's offensive right side just keeps performing. You can see them lead. It's a little delay. Big hole opens. They came down from the outside. Easy touchdown. I think his speed is a little deceptive to defenders, too. He's a little quicker than perhaps they think a big guy will be. Jeff Hall puts another one on the scoreboard, and the balls go up 10 to nothing over the Blazers of UAB, the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Henry's kind of a scooter when he runs. He doesn't have a high knee action, uh, but he's got powerful legs, and, and it's a little deceptive. You get another look at it here. Once he cuts to the outside, there's nobody going to catch him on this one. Nice run and a nice one-two punch we're already seeing in Tennessee. Tailback position. You got fresh legs in there. Well, the University of Alabama, Birmingham, Tim, is a growing school. They're relatively new to Division I. And Watson Brown has said this, no matter the outcome of this game, is very good for his program. He thinks the exposure and playing a team like Tennessee can help him, especially in the recruiting area. I would imagine so. And Tennessee's trying to win the Alabama State Championship today. They've already done it to Auburn and Alabama. And now uh, UAB, who aspires to, to be competitive with, with teams like Tennessee, Alabama and Auburn. Uh, we're getting a look at them. Not many left on there. They haven't played Troy State. Maybe they could bring <laughs> them on. <laughs> yeah, they're the if they win this one, the Alabama champion. Jeff Hall getting set to kick off. Maurice Gallery is probably a guy they want to kick it away from. Jeff's first. Punt was our kickoff was a little bit short and this one by his standards is a little bit short at the seven yard line Cedric Thatch and he is nailed and hit hard but still twisting trying to get away and got another yard out of it Andre Lott is the young man downfield Bob that one did the, the coverage on that one didn't didn't look so so great either see that the stats on the drive 10 plays 97 yards that's a coach's dream right there. Indeed it is. Six rushing and four passing plays in the drive. So that's mixing it up pretty good. Tennessee's defense now goes to work. I'm sure they'd like to pitch a shutout here today. Right now they are leading 10 to nothing. Full house backfield. And the give is to the tailback and he's got some running room across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. That's uh, Percy Coleman, the number two tailback. Al Wilson chased him down. Al playing with a sore shoulder, but he will not get that shoulder well this entire season. Once a, you injure a shoulder and you're a you see linebacker, you're going to hurt all year. You're again seeing misdirection, and uh, uh, that seems to be so far the way they're trying to attack the running game. Wilson didn't seem to have the shoulder bothering him on that hit, though. Dragging through the middle is the fullback Conley for a couple of yards. Conley is actually, I believe, their leading rusher coming into the ball game, but a smallish type uh, uh, fullback at about 190, 95 pounds. They seem to rely greatly on, on misdirection and kind of mixing it up uh, in the backfield. Uh, deception, I guess, more than power. They're going to bring the chains out to see if he made it. We'll watch with you. He did. So UAB picks up a first down. Watson Brown likes to do many different things offensively. Had a great year at Vanderbilt. One season throwing the ball almost every down. While he was coaching there, not as a player. All right, Dixon, a delay to the tailback, and boy, is he bombed. Ray Knock Upson. As John Ward said on the Georgia broadcast, on one of his plays, knock, knock, guess who? Ray Knock. 
Uh, Raynock seems to have a hit or two like this every ball game. He seems to have one of one of those that just rattles your teeth every ball game, and that was one of them right there. He had his teeth rattled by a teammate there. Took a shot at him across the helmet, but Raynock will bounce back. Nothing on that one, so it's second down and still 10 yards to go for a uh, first down. Delay. Late they're late getting the timeout yeah. called. Uh, uh, the clock ran out. The crowd usually comes to a ball game like this and, and says, "Show me something to get excited about." But they were about to get into the to to the uh, uh, act right there. Timeout by UAB. Well, he, the flag dropped, but apparently one official did receive the timeout signal before that, so they're not penalizing them. They're saying that he did call it, call timeout before the clock expired. So we'll see. November success for the balls. It's been phenomenal since 1985. 49 and 2. The losses to Notre Dame here and then that incredible thing that happened in Memphis. That hopefully will keep this team uh, focused and teams in the future focused. I'm sure it'll keep Tennessee's coaching staff focused in games where they're big, big favorites. Well, I guess in, in, a, in a sense it was not that bad because it's been used ever since that ball game to remind the, the Tennessee team of what can happen. And certainly they have listened. And, and a real difference in that team and the recent Tennessee teams is that team really couldn't run the ball very well. It was tough for them to run. As you saw the crowd shot there, some happy folks here. It is homecoming. A lot of folks have been in for a couple of days here early into Knoxville for various alumni functions and parties and so forth. The sororities and fraternities on campus have done a nice job of putting up the decorations around campus, the many banners and floats and so forth. UAB breaks out of there. Good looking uniforms. Their colors are forest green and old gold. Almost a Green Bay Packer like road uniform there. Dixon barely got it away and he was rushed. His first pass attempt. Uh, he may not want another one soon. He was nailed, huh? He was nailed. And watch the pressure coming. See Lowett coming from one side and Raynock from the other. They made a sandwich right there. Uh, Troop was the intended receiver, but it was way over his head, as you saw. I believe that's the first time Tennessee's actually blitzed in the first quarter. It's, it's a little hard against their offense to call many blitzes when they're running a lot of option plays, but in, in certain passing downs, they seem to want to do, still do it. This is one of them, third down and 10 to go for UAB, and here they come. Look at Hit him, and he got away. They didn't wrap up, but the flag is down, and so is the runner. Speed. Al Wilson. Just pure speed right there. The flag is back at the 22-yard line. We'll see if we got blocking in the back or what have you here. Let's take a look at the play again, Tim. You're watching Al come just absolutely wide open up the middle. Has the quarterback and the tailback. Tailback bounces out. Westmoreland's got the kind of speed that, that most linebackers don't, and he can run the tailback down on the sidelines. Uh, Wilson's just completely disrupted that time. Tennessee sent all three linebackers and, and uh, made great play. He did hit the quarterback and got him down, but he almost, as Tim said, got the both of them in one grasp there. Okay, the punt for UAB. Kind of a low one. Might be returnable. Eric Parker gets to the sidelines, needs one more block, can't find it, and goes down. But a good effort by Parker. Who's going to break one one of these days? Parker looks like he has that potential. He has that quickness and that, and that no fear that you've got to have in a punt returner. 34-yard kick, 11 on the return. Yeah, uh, Coach Fulmer says, Tim, that he is totally fearless has good hands and, and you just keep thinking he's going to break one watching Tennessee play and, and I believe that'll happen eventually. Tennessee on offense right here with T Martin faking to his tailback keeps it going to be hit and drop fumbles. UAB I believe has got the football they do. Derek Morgan comes up with it.
Chasing him down that time was uh, Byron Thomas, who caused the fumble. Play action pass and coming off the backside free. There was a lot of time. But coming off the backside was Byron Thomas, the right defensive end, and, it, and he made the play. T just didn't quite feel him enough or didn't get the ball tucked in enough, but it came out. All right, the crowd urges the defense on here after the turnover. Really making some good noise. Trying to disrupt the UAB team there in a wishbone, and ball. nothing happens except a fumble, which UAB pounces on. Boy, Tennessee was jamming everybody in the middle on that one. Al Wilson at the bottom of the pile, number 27. UAB looks to have an injured player down there. Boy, that is called stuffing it, Tim. You're seeing a situation when Tennessee decided it could blitz even against the, the run look or the, the option look. As long as you take your assignment and cover your lane, you can do that sometimes. And, and there was just tremendous penetration all around that time. Still working on the injured player right at midfield on the tee, as a matter of fact. Can't get his number yet. Here's a second look. They're just trying to run the wishbone, and uh, Tennessee has stuffed the play. Jeff Coleman uh, got the dive back, and that disrupted the whole play. The big surge was by that man, Walker, who's the strongest guy on the uh, Tennessee team. You, if you're going to run the wishbone, you've got to stop the penetration and be able to control the line of scrimmage. And, and so far, UAB has not been able to do that when they've lined up in that offensive set. Johnny Chavis is doing a pretty good job of guessing this team. Uh, the one first time they blitzed was the first pass that uh, UAB threw. And this time, of course, they were anticipating running in the middle. Johnny's made a lot of right calls this year. Yeah, he has. <laughs> All right, the UAB player getting up is Melvin Sidney. Number two tackle on the right side. Either ankle or knee, it would appear. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. Putting no pressure at all on him. Al Wilson came over to check on him when he was still on the ground. Hate to see anything like that happen. No, because UAB is not deep at all. They are very thin in almost all positions. As far as experience is concerned, they even have true freshmen playing cornerback. And they've had some injury bugs this, this year that they, they avoided the last couple of years. All right. Scoreboard flashes noise, and the crowd makes some. Defense, second and 13, dig again. Here's that crazy formation yep. again. Four wide outs to one side. And one to the top of your screen out there. No backs. They fire it out here, try to set a picket fence, and they've got a little something going. Pretty close to a uh, first down. Lucius Foster was the man coming out of the, well, he is a running back, but was lined up as a flanker on that one. Fred White from Strong Safety made the stop for Tennessee. Here we got it again, four wide outs. They're just raising and throwing, and uh, I guess not a hole, but a nice block on the corner. Uh, I imagine this is the first time they've showed this. That's just a guess, but... Uh, Tennessee seems to be a little confused on how to handle it, and we're going to get another look at it here. All right, it was about a yard shy of a first down, so here comes a big down for both sides. Third down and one. They try a sneak, and it may be there. I'm not even sure he needed a full yard. Quarterback Daniel Dixon on a sneak, 195-pounder. And... It's a first down, so Tennessee's defense will have to dig in again. UAB with a nice little mini drive, shall we say, going right here. They do, and they're, they're doing it with deception again, trying to put, in, put some formations on Tennessee that they haven't seen before. He popped one in the middle, got some running room, and got deeper into Tennessee territory to about the 25-yard line. That's the fullback, Corey Hunley. And Deion Grant had to make the stop from safety 13 yards on the carry for UAB threatening here. They're, they're, they're putting their tailback in the slot, running him in motion. 
and then going the same way every time. They've run the same play out of that set about four times now, and they're trying to either give to the fullback or run the option off of it with the quarterback keeping it. That time he read it well and gave up the middle. Nice blocking. It's uh, actually a, about the 28 and a half yard line is where the ball will be spotted. And that's the end of the first quarter of play. Tennessee leading by a score of 10 to nothing, but the University of Alabama threatening and when we begin the second quarter we will join John Ward for the call of a couple of plays they had a big event today which I hope you had a chance to see prior to our game here on the pay-per-view and uh, nice tribute for him at Thompson Bowling Arena a lot of very big names and a lot of his friends all the proceeds from that will go to scholarship fund athletics and the mass communications department but of course John and Bill Anderson are stepping down after this season. John, after the basketball season ends, and 31 years on the job has become a legend, probably the best known person in the state of Tennessee. And certainly uh, they had a great tribute for him today. All kinds of uh, people all the way from the vice president of the United States uh, giving tribute to him over at Thompson Bowling a, a little while before this game started. And you can see uh, John there with Russ Bibb sitting to, to John's left, who's been his longtime spotter. And we will uh, pick up on a couple of his plays sometime early in this second quarter as we get set to go to the second quarter. UAB with a impressive drive going right here. Very definitely. They, they've, they've run a little trickery in with their passing game and they're running some option plays uh, against Tennessee that have hurt them uh, on this drive, which has, has started or, or come off of a turnover. Tennessee 7 to 4 at first downs. 130 yards total for the Vols in the first quarter, as opposed to 40 yards total for UAB. But UAB. Trying to make a statement right now. First down and 10. And they're making a statement. Very same play. Conley all the way down to about the six yard line before Eric Westmoreland made the stop. It's a gain of 15 yards and moves the sticks again. They're, they're having Tennessee over pursue just like Al Wilson did there and then cutting back on him. But it's again tailback in the slot. He starts in motion and Tennessee over pursues that way and the fullback comes back. All right, let's see what Watson Brown has in mind right here. He spreads the field once again. Same formation. Dixon. They try to hit it early, try to pop it quick, but Tennessee's defense pretty well ready for Connolly that time as everybody in the middle had a piece of him. That's the kind of series that they've got something else you're going to probably do off of it here where he's going to quarterback's going to keep pitch something else if he doesn't see the fullback open. But, but it'll be interesting to see how that develops and how Tennessee tries to defense it. It's not bad right now but as the game progresses it's probably going to get a little chilly out there in the stands but it looks like the fans have come prepared for that. Same exact formation. And a little bit of running room maybe a yard and a half or so before Connolly is dragged down and it's Jeff Coleman the left defensive tackle who made the stop of Connolly. Ball's trying to dig in and prevent UAB from getting on the board Tennessee a 42 point favorite coming into this contest and of course ranked number two in the important poll right now behind Ohio State in the bowl coalition. Dixon looks over his defense. Got receivers on both sides. Got a man in motion. A lot of activity. And once again, they go right in the middle to the fullback, Connolly. And Al Wilson made the stop. Sets up an interesting call by, by Watson Brown. Does he go for it or does he kick? Well, it's fourth down and about three. So it looks like they're going to kick. But I wouldn't bet everything on that. <laughs> it's one of those games there's nothing to lose to take a few gambles. Jake Arians. The kick is up and it is good. It was not Arians who was listed as their kicker. Gallego, Rhett Gallego puts it through. There he is. And it's a 10 to 3 ball game. 
shows you the importance of not turning the ball over. UAB uh, uh, pressured Martin from behind, caused a fumble, was able to go the short field and get three points. So we're early in the second quarter of play. 1998 homecoming contest for the Volunteers. 12 minutes 34 before halftime. They're up 10 to 3. Next week they play Arkansas, followed by Kentucky and Vanderbilt. And that wraps up the regular season. And then they're hoping they'll be in Atlanta. Well, if they win all three, they will be in Atlanta. In fact, they could be in Atlanta by losing one of them, but that would take them out of the big picture, the one they'd like to eventually wind up in, and that's Tempe, Arizona, where the Fiesta Bowl is played. That, that certainly would, and, and uh, defensively, Tennessee's got some work to do right today. Uh, Watson Brown's always been known as a, as a person that had a good offensive mind, could give you some different looks, give you some deception, and, and make the most out of what he has, and uh, I've been impressed with UAB's offensive scheme so far. It's bothered Tennessee. Ten plays, 45 yards. Took 414 off of the clock. 20 yards, the official field goal distance. Peerless is deep. We'll explain that bowl coalition system for you in detail at halftime. Kick out of bounds. I hope you can. <laughs> Actually, I can. But <laughs> the person explaining it knows what they're talking about. Okay. So. <laughs> You'll be a little baffled after you hear it, but perhaps it'll clear up some of it for you. Lots of co poles and lots of computers. Strength of schedule, strength of the opponent's schedule, the opponent's opponent. Be placed at 35, first and 10. Kick out of bounds, of course, it brings it out to the 35-yard line. So Tennessee starts with excellent field position here on this drive. There's Watson having some words with one of his players. Here's the handoff to the tailback and not much there. Travis Stevens is back in at tailback. He's alternating with Travis Henry as they have done and done well since the injury to Jamal Lewis. Next week, Tennessee plays Arkansas. We'll have the broadcast of the game at 2 o'clock Eastern to 1 o'clock Central Standard Time to be played right here at Neyland Stadium. Arkansas, of course, undefeated with a stirring victory in convincing style over Ole Miss today. The ball's to the line, second out, right at seven and a half yards to go. The pitch will be to Stevens trying to get to the corner. Turns to the 40, slides to the 45, and bangs his way for a first down, I think, to the 46-yard line. He was finally pinned by James Williams, but Tennessee has a first down as Travis Stevens from Clarksville, Tennessee. 54 carries, 269 yards coming into the game. Travis Henry from Frostproof, Florida, 64 carries, 346 yards. And, of course, Jamal Lewis went out with the injury in the Auburn game. He had gained 497 yards. Tennessee to the line, first down. Flankers left and right, ball now on the far or left hash mark. Martin to throw. Here's the hitch and go deep downfield. Oh, careless Price makes the catch at the 30-yard line, and Williams is there, but just the brilliant throw and the little fake, then the hitch, and then the go, and then the first down. Uh, the ball, yeah, the All right, uh, they're the voice of John Ward. It's been John's day here in Knoxville with the big testimonial today at noon beautiful throw by T right on the money floated it over the cornerbacks head as peerless went down the sideline perfect J timing on that one John got a great play to call yeah he did <laughs> Tennessee sends peerless in motion this time and they give it off to Travis Stevens he bounces outside and still bounces and bounces into and over a UAB defender that's James Williams Number 38, the cornerback on the left side who took the punishment but did bring him down. There's Stevens, deceptively strong. See him going to the right side again, being led by Philip Crosby, and, and uh, big hit, big explosion there at the point of contact. Second down, about four to go for the Volunteers. Ball resting on the 25-yard line. He's put it in the stomach of the fullback, and not much there. That's Philip Crosby. So all three fullbacks have played in the game thus far, starting with Bryson, and then Bartholomew saw some action, and we'll see more. And this is Philip Crosby in. 
You're kind of hoping that the defense overruns the fullback there, but it didn't happen that time. So it becomes a third down and three for Tennessee, leading 10 to three, favored by 42 in this ball game. Here's the handoff and it's going to be close. Travis Stevens may be close enough to make it a go for it on fourth down situation, but he may even have it. Two things in this ball game, Tim, that will hurt Tennessee, and that's the strength of UAB. And then if they don't pile up a lot of points, that will hurt. Uh, definitely. They, this needs to be a route, frankly, for Tennessee to stay uh, in the number two position in the bowl uh, championship series polls. Uh, and uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. So far, UAB looks like they've got other ideas. They've played very well. Well, you see how close. I think you go for this. But I am not the coach. Looks like he looks like you did. Good. <laughs> <laughs> There's Philip, who's done a marvelous job. Three for four this season on fourth down conversion. So the odds are in their favor. Do you sneak it? Do you give it to your fullback? You sneak it. Remember, it only was like two inches. So looks like he's got pretty it. evident he has it here. When the official's right foot went down, that's the direction he's headed. They, they're usually going to get it. First down and 10 to go for Tennessee. Ball right on the 20-yard line, right in the middle of the field. Eighth play in the drive for Tennessee. Peerless in motion. Fakes to his tailback, throws to Peerless. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. Peerless about as good as anybody in the country at catching those below the knee. Not only is T. Martin getting better every game, but Peerless Price certainly is. You're, you're seeing a T roll out, throws it down and away. Great catch. Absolutely great catch. And, and Peerless is making those plays this year more and more. Tennessee looking at a second and two. They give it to the tailback, bounces outside, into the end zone, touchdown, Travis Stevens. 12 yards. That's an example, Tim, I think, of great vision on the part of the tailback. Very much. Stevens has that ability to bounce it outside when the hole stopped up, and, and UAB was coming so hard at the point of, of attack uh, that their corner uh, outside linebacker just got caught inside. Here you get another look out of it. Nice lead block by Philip Crosby. Hooks the outside linebacker and allows him to go in. Jeff Hall's extra point is up, and it is good. And Tennessee goes up 17 to 3. 9.29 remaining in the first half of play here in Knoxville on a rather brisk but beautiful day for football. <laughs> there you go, Rome County. <laughs> Give them six. Big Chad Clifton, who's had a good, good year, along with everybody else on the offensive line for Tennessee. Chad's probably saying, run one behind me for a change. Let me see if I can get in the act. And he did. Terrific offensive lineman from Martin, Tennessee, a place where we've got another young offensive tackle, Will Offenhusel, who, who looks like he's going to have a lot of promise. Tell you what, they look to have a good future in the offensive line. They lose uh, two or three guys, but they've got some big, big redshirt freshmen. And I think they're going to be pretty strong. I think Tennessee most always will be strong in the offensive line and receiver. That has never seemed to be a major problem for Very much so. And, and Philip Fulmer's relentless uh, uh, work in recruiting has paid off as Tennessee's been able to stockpile talent, uh, even particularly in the defensive line now, and bring waves of uh, fresh players in the ball game. I think you're seeing that help them. And, and lots of positions. LSU's leading Alabama at the half, six to nothing. Florida leading Vandy in the fourth quarter, 45 to six. Some of the games being played today. Earlier, Arkansas, a big winner. All right, drop that kick, picks it up. Sometimes these turn out to be big plays, and it was a big play. Got up over the 35-yard line. 
Sometimes when a receiver drops it, Tim, it kind of relaxes the defense, and it usually turns out to be a pretty decent play. Uh, that that time was so, and you, you're seeing nine plays, 65 yards. The offense is, is working pretty much like clockwork if they can keep from turning the ball over. Now let's see what happens with Tennessee's defense. UAB gave them fits last time and had the football. By the way, uh, Maurice Gallery on the return that time, and he is a freshman. So Watson down the line will probably get it together for UAB, playing a lot of very, very young people. Quarterback keeps it this time and pays for it. Eric Westmoreland chased him down. Speed of Westmoreland and linebacker, very evident there. He was a running back in high school, and he can, he's got the speed of a running back and, and makes the play there. That's the second time Westmoreland has done it. You're seeing, uh, looks like he wants to keep. I'm not sure he didn't really want to give that one, but Westmoreland runs him down. UAB is having much more success trying to attack inside. When they try to go wide, Tennessee's speed on defense seems to be running them down. Their best luck so far has been run inside. They're trying to vary their plays uh, and doing a nice job trying to set up plays. Now, all day long, he's been giving that to the tailback or the fullback. This time, he kept it. This time, there's a confused mess down the field as far as UAB is concerned, and Tennessee just stuffs everything. <laughs> Billy Ratliff, the whole gang, met on that one. There's Renock, linebacker's defensive line. I look like a play we'll see on the replay, perhaps, where he wanted to give it off, and maybe the back didn't accept it. Tennessee's defense did, just so, together. did so much jumping around before the play. They were confused, I think, and eventually I believe that confused UAB's quarterback, uh, and, and uh, Dixon made the wrong step out on the play. It's a third and long, 17. Definitely a passing situation. Here comes that strange formation again. Yep. They have thrown out in the flat before on this a couple of times and now comes the flag the clock ran out it looks like it is delay of game unless he got a timeout called as he did earlier delay of the game on the offense. well he did not get the timeout this time so it'll be five yards back downfield it's it's uh, uh, that four wide outs to one side, one wide out to the other. No back in the backfield looks like the way they want to attack again. Let's see if they're if they've got something new to run off of this. UAP two penalties for 20 yards. Tennessee has not been penalized as yet. All right, now it becomes a third and 22. And Dixon steps out, throws it out as he's done every time. Tennessee waiting for it this time. Got a little yardage, but remember they needed 22. Cedric Thatch was the man out there. So they've done that now three times. Nice we figure adjustment. next time they probably will send a guy down the sideline. Nice adjustment by Tennessee then, but you got to think there's something else yeah. that, that UAB can do off of that. Maybe the kid catching the balls can throw it, uh, or they're going to fake it out there and then try to go deep. A lot of their plays seem to be set up plays for later. All right, the punter is deep. Eric Parker set to receive. Tennessee came pretty close. He went down, the kicker did, but it was not roughing. And Parker gets it across midfield into UAB territory at about the 46-yard line. Bought up 25 yards, return of six. So Tennessee set up in great field position again with 6.41 remaining in the first half. Balls on top, 17-3. Nice bonus that that Parker will feel that short of a punt and keep it from hitting the ground and rolling and, and getting more distance on the punt. There's the current ranking. Of course, we'll have a new one coming out this weekend. Tennessee right now number two. UCLA, remember, was number one the first week. Then they had the close call and against Stanford and it dropped them. Tennessee trying to play power football here with Travis Henry and he gets not much. UAB did a nice job of closing that one down. Daryl Steele, the linebacker, was the primary tackler on that one, along with Williams. Puts Tennessee in a passing situation. Last time, a backside linebacker, defensive end, caused the fumble on. Uh, uh, let's see what happens here. Only got a yard, so it becomes second and nine for Tennessee. Two receivers at the top of the screen, and T's going to throw it and wants to throw it all the way. Got a man 
just a hair too late on the throw. He was wide open, Cedric Wilson. T just didn't quite get it there in time. Yodan Basu, or Basu, made the stop. Yes, that's nice French name there. Great protection. T looks around, finally sees Wilson break, but doesn't quite get enough mustard on the ball and allowed the recovery by Basu to, to make the defensive play. There he is, closing rapidly. Nice, nice recovery by the cornerback. For a second, Wilson had six written all over it there. They're blitzing. Tennessee picks it up nicely, very nicely. Cedric Wilson, he's emerging as a star. In the past three or four games, he has been magnificent. Really want to get a look at this block by, by the back. The backside protection by Travis Henry was the key to this play. 26 see, yards. See the blitz coming. Travis Henry stops him cold, allows T the time to throw. That was the key to that play. Nice block by a young running back who hasn't had much experience doing that. I like the way Wilson catches the ball with his hands, not his body. He reaches out and snatches it out of the air. There's Cedric. Again, they bring some heat, but Tennessee picks it up and screens out here on the right side to Sean Bryson for some positive yardage. Balls up 17 to 3 and trying to add to that right now. After a relatively short punt by UAB, put him up in pretty good position. Red zone so far. Not bad. T. Martin looks at the defense. A long count, and it worked, apparently. Hard count pulled off UAB. They did make contact, but was Tennessee responsible for movement to bring him offside? We'll wait and see what the official says. They're discussing it. T. Martin, 8 of 12 now for 117. Before the snap, contact by the defense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So it was on UAB. See, Spencer Riley is still until the, the, the defender comes into the neutral zone and makes contact with him. Definitely offside. Well, I think he snapped the ball the second the contact was made, too. So that assured the penalty on UAB. Heads up by Riley. So it becomes for Tennessee, nine yards away from pay dirt. First and nine. Here's the handoff to the tailback. And pretty good job by the UAB defense of bringing him down. Travis Henry, the ball carrier. They only give him, See him a yard. Try the counter tray again by pulling the, the backside guard, but well defended that time uh, by UAB. Chris Neal from Strong Safety, who's played a good football game. There he is, number 18. He's been very active today. Tennessee now looking at a second down and eight. They put Cedric Wilson in motion. They're going to throw off of this, perhaps. Yes. And a great, fabulous catch by Cedric Wilson. Wow. I didn't think he could get it in there. I hesitated because I didn't think he, I thought my eyes were deceiving me there. Take a look at this. T rolling out. Looks like the receiver's covered, but he put something on it. Terrific catch by Wilson, but he can't quite get it into the end zone. So it becomes a third down and one or less. There's the sneak, and he's in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Some happy campers here on homecoming day. The official attendance today, 106,508. 106,508 for homecoming 98. Scott will hold and Hall will attempt to add another point on the board right here. It's been pretty automatic on extra points all of his career here. 
This one dead center, and it becomes a 24 to 3 ball game. With four minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Also coming up at halftime, in addition to explaining how the bowl coalition system works, the rankings and so forth, you'll see some of the all-time great ball highlights. I believe you're right about Cedric Wilson. Every ball game, he seems to be making more and more plays, and, and obviously T has confidence in him, and the coaches have confidence in him to make him a primary receiver on a lot of key plays. Of course, with Peerless uh, gone next year and Copeland, he will be, I would think, the go-to guy, the way things look right now. We're still waiting for David Martin to come up on the scene. He was injured early. They've gotten him in a few plays, but so much is expected of him. Coaches think he has a great, great future here, and maybe we'll see something out of him today. It's, it's a day when you might see several young receivers get in the act if Tennessee will continue throwing the ball uh, late in the ball game. Uh, Eric Parker is another who, who has played a big role as a punt returner, but certainly has the, the capability of being an outstanding wide receiver. All right. Tennessee set to kick off. Jeff Hall, 24 to 3. Volunteers leading. There's the drive, seven plays, 46 yards, a little over two minutes. Martin on the sneak in for the touchdown. Fourth rush touchdown of 98. Jeff. Kicking off, kind of short again, at the nine-yard line is Gallery. And here he comes, out across the 30, all the way to the, about the 34-yard line. What Tennessee needs to do some work on the kick returning. It's It's been a little bit shaky all season. Not, not very good kickoffs, not very deep or high, and then the coverage is not there. And this guy's a good kickoff returner. Gallery can move. He can move, and they, they obviously work on it. Puts them in good position. It's uh, close to the 39-yard line. No, 36-yard line. I'm sorry. 36. Here they come, that same formation. This time the quarterback keeps, and he is nailed. Raynock Thompson and Al Wilson. Tennessee still with their front line players in there, although they have substituted some on the defensive line, as they have all year. They figure they can play about 10 or 11 guys. That's that triple option look that time instead of giving to the fullback the quarterback just kept it. And he had some pretty good yards. He picked up five as a matter of fact it's second down and five to go for the Blazers UAB. This time he steps back wants to delay and run and again picked up a little bit yardage but shy of a first down. Granzow and Al Wilson Judd Granzow and now it's linebacker. There he is. <laughs> the big dog. <laughs> Smokey. Having a good day at the ball yard. Second only to John Ward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perhaps so. <laughs> 24 to 3, Tennessee leading and trying to prevent a UAB first down here. They need a yard. Long count. Clock running down. Still running. Four seconds. Three, two. They didn't get it off. He may have called timeout. He did. He got the timeout called right at the zero mark. Uh, in a sense, a big play. It's third and one. There's 248 left in the half. If UAB is going to continue this drive and keep Tennessee out of the end zone again before the halftime, uh, they need this first down. Again, the Arkansas team won today, which is a plus for Tennessee, remember, in the bowl system. That is a plus because it's strength of schedule that helps a little. And a, and a plus in that next week, the biggest game in the country is probably right here in, in Nayland Stadium with, with Arkansas coming in. There's the uh, remaining teams on the UAB schedule. Remember, they played Tennessee Tech and beat them earlier in the season, so they will have played four teams from the state of Tennessee. Of course, MTSU is 
making the move that UAB made uh, a few years ago. They're moving next year up to Division One, so they're going to go through some struggling times over there, no doubt, as all those teams moving up do. But we will have another Division One team in the state of Tennessee. UAB's production thus far, 68 total yards, 56 return yards. There's Al Wilson encouraging his teammates. Third down and one. Here's the handoff, and he got it and more. Almost broke it for the touchdown. Dragged down by Dion Grant. Morrow, the ball carrier. Listed on our depth chart here is their number four fullback. Looked pretty good right there. He's a 235 pounder. Nice caved off the right side of Tennessee's defensive line, which was really playing for the dive play, and he broke it off tackle. Nice, so, nice play by Dion Grant to prevent the touchdown. Little look of disapproval right there. First down and 10 to go at midfield for the Blazers. Dixon. Hands off against the grain. Boy, did he get hit, but he didn't go down. Lucius Foster bounces finally out of bounds over here. Good example of having to wrap them up. Don't just bang them. Somebody will get Not, chewed out in the film room right here. Nice misdirection, but they come around. They've got it covered. Al hits him, but doesn't wrap up. You've seen that some out of Wilson since he's injured his shoulder. He, he doesn't seem to quite have the ability to wrap up that he did before. Made a solid jarring hit, but you got to bring him down. Winds up with a four yard gain. It becomes second down and six. Once again, they go to their tailback, and this time they do wrap up. Fullback it is, Connolly, and they bring him down. At the bottom of the stack, number 46, Ray Knock Thompson. One with Walker. There's Big Darwin. There's Ray Knock. He's been solid all year. Very definitely. He, he's made some big hits, and, and Walker seems to be having a very steady uh, year at defensive tackle. Even when he doesn't make the play, Walker is very disruptive in the middle and very solid on defense. Third down now and five. Big down right here. Well, both of them, they got hit just as he threw, but he got it off. And the receiver is driven out of bounds, I think, short of the first down. Al Wilson. Uh, Boy, Al and Rain <laughs> are all over the place today. <laughs> Goodrich got the, got the receiver by the jersey, and Al Wilson finished it off on the sidelines with a terrific hit. You'll get a look at it. Nice play just to get the ball off. Goodrich corners him. Oh. Uh, Hello. Nice. Here's Al Wilson. He didn't See wrap him. up here, but he really pounded him. Seeing a ni nice play. It's about a yard shy. So they try to sneak, and boy, he didn't get over two or three inches, I don't think. A flag is down across the way and on the near side, too. Flags dropped at each end of the line of scrimmage. I believe you're going to have motion on UAB's part before the snap, which is automatic penalty, although I don't think they made the play, made the first down. They may. Before the snap, ball start by the offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. No, they don't measure. You're right, it's automatic, so it'll be fourth and uh, about six to go for a first. UAB five penalties for 35. The balls have not had the flag drop on them as yet. Southeastern Conference crew, of course, officiating this game. They decide not to go for it. Six yards, even though the ball is across midfield. It's on the 46-yard line, but Watson chooses to punt. And this kid has kicked poorly all day. Ball goes out of bounds, short punt. Tennessee will take over in pretty good field position. Punts good for 22 yards. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Tennessee, with with uh, uh, 53 seconds left and 70 yards to go, if they try to move the ball downfield and score or just run out the clock. Lee Carter, the putter, had one good one early on in the ball game. But said uh, a couple of. Uh, short ones here of late. Yeah, they may put him back in driving that truck if he kicks again like that. 
Not much in the middle that time for Travis Stevens. Tripped up just as he crossed the line of scrimmage. We've gone under a minute now. 39 seconds to go, and the clock is running. Tennessee's just going to apparently run it out right here. No, they decide to fire one out on the flat and see what the receiver can do in the open field. That's Travis Stevens out of the backfield and got it out of bounds and stopped the clock at least with 27 seconds to go. Cutcliffe upstairs here deciding, Tim, what to do right here. Yes, not much time to get points, but why not let him try? Fling one down the field. Balls leading by a score of 24 to 3. 27 seconds to go. Third down, and they need four for a first down to just run out the clock. And apparently, that's what they're going to do. Travis Stevens carried the ball, and the crowd didn't approve <laughs> of that goal. They wanted it downfield. Clock runs out. So the volunteers go to the locker room with a 24 to 3 lead over UAB. We keep reminding you of how much they're favored by 42 because tell you what the computers I don't know about the coaches and the writers and broadcasters but the computers look at the score. They do. I uh, know some folks who think Tennessee Ohio State or Tennessee that would be a better matchup perhaps than uh, Kansas State or UCLA getting a good look at the first half highlights here. Travis Henry breaking it off right tackle to the outside for Tennessee's first touchdown. Great blocking on, on the right side over there. Jarvis Rito. Here's Travis Stevens doing the same thing, only breaking it left behind Chad Clifton. Easy score. And we've got Westmoreland pursuing against the option. Tackling the quarterback for about a four-yard loss. Tennessee's speed was evident defensively. Any time that UAB tried to go outside, Tennessee's linebackers had too much speed for them. All right, we're set to go in the second half of play as the sun has gone down and so has the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> that, that strange noise in the second half may be teeth chattering. That's right. <laughs> if you hear a small pause, it's because I've gone to get my overcoat. <laughs> it will be brisk by the time we end this ball game. Tennessee leading 24 to three. Jeff Hall kicks off a little better this time, but not to the goal line as he has been kicking inside the four yard line. And again, a good return by UAB. Maurice Gallery has had return after return where he's just been a half a step away from going all the way. Tennessee definitely with some work to do in this department. Dominic Stevenson, I think, made the stop. Ball set the defense. UAB with receivers at the top of your screen and a man in motion to the right and they give it off to the fullback and he crosses the 40 to the 42 yard line. Corey Conley. Al Wilson made the stop but not before positive yardage. A lot of motion stuff Tim. It is and UAB comes right back with the best play they had in the first half which was tailback in motion and give to the fullback on the dive uh, and they hit Tennessee for five yards on the first play from scrimmage. UAB with a field goal in the first half. Otherwise, Tennessee pretty well held them in check. They come back with that same motion and they give it once again, but this time to the tailback instead of the fullback. Ball seemed to be loose down there. Was he on the ground? That's the question. Tennessee players are pointing, but they don't count. <laughs> Only the official. <laughs> They're coached to referee a little bit at that point, I think. Corey Terry made the stop that time for Tennessee. So it becomes a third and two. Same thing. They're trying to get Tennessee to over pursue and cut back. Uh, Terry got his ankle and got him down. Brings up a big third and one. All right. Here we go. It's big for both of them. Crowd gets into it. They go motion once again. They give it off. Dive. He didn't make it. 
Tennessee stopped him Cole Corey Conley Corey Terry was one of the first in underneath that pile. UAB probably will ask for a measurement if the official says it's short right now. He's saying Tennessee ball I think. They're ruling he didn't make it. So Tennessee defense Tim comes up big right there. They certainly do third and one and they had him stop short of the first down anyway but to get the, the turnover might spur a big second half for Tennessee. Coaches always say that first. Here you go. Dive play. Terry's in on him quickly. Boy, he slid down the line. Certainly did. He rapidly. Closed, he closed and the ball was out. And Steve Johnson had it. I don't know what took so long to decide. Yeah, they ruled apparently that it did come loose before he hit the ground. So it's Tennessee's ball anyway. Here's the rollout and a nice one. T. Martin rolling out and hitting Copeland, Jermaine Copeland. First catch by Jermaine tonight. Great fake, great fake. T's uh, work in that area has improved also since the uh, first game. Just very much so. He really rides the fake on the bootleg to 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 set the play up. High backs, one receiver on each side. They pitch it to the tailback. Looking for some running room. Got some. That's Travis Henry. And he crossed the 30, driving deeper into UAB territory. Travis Henry out of Frostproof, Florida. There's Travis's numbers so far in the first half. Pretty good total. Pretty nice work so far, and it's not over yet. He has kind of a relaxed running style. He doesn't look like there's a lot of effort in it, but he's powerful. Sometimes he pops real quick. Other times he kind of glides and waits for these linemen to do their job, and that's a sign of a very good back. Nice fake again. And a nice throw. Touchdown, Tennessee. Cedric Wilson. What a night for Cedric. 28 yards. Again, it was a beautiful fake that froze the secondary for just a second, Tim. And you'll take a look at it in a moment, but again, a nice fake and a nice perfect throw. Fake, rides him down, sets up, and then zap right on the money. Perfect throw. Wilson had beat his man on a post route, and Cedric Wilson looks bigger and bigger in Tennessee's offense. Ball got on his shoulder there for a second, but he hung on to it. And Jeff Hall puts it through, and Tennessee goes up 31 to 3. Interesting, Wilson was, was a high school quarterback at Memphis Melrose and recruited along with Andre Lott and, and uh, wide receiver. And he has become the wide receiver out of the three. And, and uh, he's one of those guys when you sign him, you say, Tennessee signed a five foot ten quarterback. What are they doing that for? <laughs> you're getting another look at it. And you're going to see why they signed a five foot ten quarterback. This guy's becoming a terrific receiver. He's got four for 70. Great throw and catch, perfect protection. No, no, no pressure on T. Nice protection all the way. There it was on the shoulder, but he pulled it back in. He's got some hands. Nice concentration to catch that high ball and get it in before the defender could strip it. 31 to 3 with 12.05 remaining in the third quarter on this homecoming night. Strains of Rocky Top going as the alumni and all the fans look on here. 106,000 plus the official attendance here tonight. 106,508 to be exact. Jeff Hall setting it down to kick it off again. And let's see if the Vols can improve their kick coverage here. This has been the one kind of glaring bad spot for them tonight. The one thing they haven't done well not kicking it real well and not covering kick it away from uh, gallery this time and they do a good job. Cedric Thatch was the man who caught it. They kicked it away from gallery who's been returning them for 26 to 30 yards but Tennessee got down and did a nice job that time scoring drive three plays 45 yards only a minute nine off the clock. Wilson with a 28 yard reception. Fourth touchdown of the season again. He's 
up to 70 yards in receptions here tonight. Turnovers are so big, short field when you can get a turnover. UAB trying to get some offense going here against a very stout Tennessee defense. They put the pressure on him, got his pass away, completed it with a man right on his back. That's Steve Johnson. Quentin uh, Troop was the receiver. Six foot, 170 pound junior. Johnson rode him down, but he hung on. Nice throw by Daly because Johnson had coverage all the way, just couldn't quite get around him to knock the ball down. Ball's on the 22 yard line where it becomes a second down and six situation. Dixon three of four for some positive yardage here. Dixon back again looking this time he wants to go long his receiver is out of bounds and was out of bounds long before the ball got there. That receiver is Ernest Ross 511 junior nice nice coverage all the way by Steve Johnson he's got the receiver pushed all the way to the side of the field where he's running his route for the last 15 yards out of bounds you cannot run on the field off out of bounds and come back on the field and catch it so as soon as he stepped out he was an illegal receiver all right it's third down and six let's see if they go to the air again Numbers on their third down conversions there, three for eight. He's rolling. He's got real heavy pressure. He completed the pass, but I think he's short. Boy, Tennessee really brought some heat that time. Fourth down, and he only got about three yards out of it. Daniel Dixon is beginning to take a beating. He got a real shot from Al Wilson just as he let that ball go. Look at the pressure here. There's Wilson's pop up to the quarterback. Perfectly legal. Flag down. Here's the ball bouncing around and it will die at the uh, be downed at the 40 about the 43 yard line. There's a marker down. A little bit of an unusual spot for a marker uh, about 30 yards downfield. If it's against Tennessee, it would be a first down. Remember, they needed only three. May have been after the ball was kicked, uh, so it would be just taken off of the, uh, taken back from the, the point of possession, but. Illegal substitution by the receiving team by the yard penalty from the previous spot and that'll make it a first down. Mm. That's quite a mistake right there. Somebody on the punt return team didn't get on the field till the last second. You, you're I'm not sure the exact time but in the last about five seconds you're not allowed to substitute before the ball snapped and it's generally called uh, against the offense for trying to upset a defense but that was a strange call. That was the first penalty of the night against Tennessee but it was a big one because instead of having the ball it gives the ball to UAB once again keeps their drive alive. Here's that same against the grain motion and this time I get a big play out of it up across the 40 to the 42 yard line Lucius Foster the tailback and he's hit by Raynock Thompson but not until some big yardage is rolled off. Nice uh, misdirection running kind of a little reverse and, and Sean Ellis slightly overruns the play leaves a big lane for Foster who's a nice back. That's what they're counting on you to do uh, is overrun the play or react to the fake. First down and 10. A fine East Tennessee and enjoying the game. <laughs> They spread the field once again. Tennessee gets to him and he gets the pass away, but it's a wounded duck. Oh. He was nailed. Uh, I, I admire uh, uh, Daniel Dixon. That he got hit hard by Westmoreland that time. This look at the pressure coming backside. Bam. Eric Westmoreland really delivers a painful blow. Westmoreland's in the middle of his best ball game of the season. It looks like and and. UAB has generally rotated quarterbacks Bob but not so tonight they've gone with Dixon with, with uh, Dixon all the way so far. He's done a nice job with the fakes. Tennessee 
off balance a little bit. It's second down, 10 yards to go with the incompleted pass. This time he wants to keep it, and he's going to pay for it. Raynock Thompson. Raynock was not fooled at all on that one. Speed kills, and, and Tennessee's got it at linebacker. This guy, Dixon has no chance with Raynock trying to get outside of him. Lost four on it. Third down and 14. There's Daniel Dixon. Four of six, 23 yards. The blankets have come out as the temperature continues to drop here. Passing situation, Dixon back. Tennessee coming after him. He gets pounded again. Let's see, he did not catch it. Thought for a second he might have made a miraculous catch, but not so. It hit the ground. Quentin Troop was the intended receiver, and so Tennessee will get the ball back. Again, John Chavis chooses to put extra pressure on and sending a linebacker, and there's simply not time for, for Dixon to really set and throw this ball like he wants to. Kick is away. This time it's a better kick, a much better one. Fielded at the 20 yard line, 25, 30. Eric Parker out around. Flag goes down. Now another flag, another 40 yard punt, 11 yards on the return. But you have to figure with all those flags flying that somebody was clipping or blocking from behind, uh, Tim. Looked like a block in the back. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Corey Terry, but it was a pretty obvious block in the back just at the point at the corner. Uh, well, at least three flags hit the field, so it had to be pretty obvious. Referee will tell us exactly here in a second. Going to put Tennessee in kind of a hole to start out. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team. During the run, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So it puts the ball back on the 20 yard line. And that's where the balls will take over with nine minutes and 12 seconds to go in this quarter, the third. Balls up 31 to 3. As T. Martin's numbers so far are very impressive 12 out of 15, 168 yards. Got a man in motion to the left. They give it right up the middle to the tailback. He's struggling. He lost the football, and I believe, let's see, UAB may have it. Travis Stevens fumble the football, and UAB gets it right back and deep in Tennessee territory. A brutal turnover for the balls right there. Nick Stewart was the man for UAB. Stevens struggling for the extra yardage and has the ball pop out. Just can't have that happen. Young backs, everyone, sometimes it happens, but, but certainly deep in your own territory, you want to protect the ball. UAB turnover. Tennessee a couple now. Crowd in the end zone really roaring now, making it tough on Dixon and his teammates. He gets back, gets a pass off for the end zone. Well covered. Tended for Mallon, Darius Mallon. Tennessee pretty well in good shape all the way, Tim, on that one. Steve Johnson looked like he knew exactly where uh, the route was being run. He got back in the deep corner and, and had the ball played all the way. Five wideouts. Golden was also back there in pretty good shape. Tennessee brings the heat, and it pays off. Incomplete pass. He had to hurry his throw, intended for his fullback, Conley, coming out of the backfield, and Tennessee pressure once again was tremendous. Tennessee's got some young players in for this to be a, a big situation in the game. They're playing uh, Steve, Dominique Stevenson at a linebacker, Will Overstreet at a defensive end, and they're putting the pressure. They're going after him. They've been wanting to take a look at Golden in there, too. So they got a chance. UAB's starting field position, their own 40, so it's been very good here in the second half. 
Once again, the crowd really roaring down here. Three of nine on third down conversions, and this is third and ten. Tennessee may have jumped. May have been motioned by UAB, but Tennessee man definitely was in the neutral zone. Uh, if there's a penalty here, give the crowd an assist. They're in the ball game all of a sudden. Before the snap, ball start by the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. All right, this is the play where the quarterback Dixon really takes a pop and kind of gets up slowly. Yeah, they, they were trying to run that little funnel screen underneath, but Tennessee had it defensed well anyway, besides putting pressure on the quarterback. Sean Ellis. All right, now let's see if the crowd gets back in it again. Here comes the crowd noise. Third down and 15 for a first down. They're on the 20 yard line. Tennessee just rushing the front men. Didn't blitz that time. The pass is complete, but it's not enough for a first down. Ernest Ross was the receiver. UAB showed that they could do something different off the four wideout sets. They, they, they threw to the backside, the lone receiver on, on the short side. Gallego coming in to kick a field goal. A little bit surprising. They're down 31 to three. Need nine yards. I might have gone for it. Watson not gambling, though. He wants to get some more points on the board. And apparently there was some kind of movement by the UAB line because Tennessee players are applauding with the flag falling. Eight minutes, 13 seconds to go in quarter number three. Crowd still very much here and very much into it. That may turn out to be a big penalty. This this is not a kicker with great range so far this season. And, and uh, this would, assuming we've got a penalty coming up, it would back him up from a 31 or two yard kick to about a 37 yard kick. Tell you what, the crowd has come under some criticism here, especially in the Alabama game, Tim, for not Order making snap. enough noise. Ball start on the offense. Still fourth down. Ball start. But uh, they have been rambunctious here tonight. Of course, they were extremely important in the Florida game. Did a great job of making noise there. They're trying to help this team. Ball's going to be put down on the 26-yard line. Making it a 36 yard effort. It's up there and it is good. So Gallego hits and it's now a 31 to 6 game. Both uh, UAB scores have come off of turnovers. Both have come on, on the short field end by, by uh, getting a, a fumble from T. Martin in the first half, getting that fumble from Travis Stevens. Although they did not advance the ball, they were at the 15 when they got the fumble, so they were able to kick. Uh, time for Tennessee if they want to impress the pollsters to get cranked up a little bit here in the second half. Tennessee has had only two turnovers, but uh, as Tim pointed out, both times UAB has scored off of those turnovers, two field goals. Tennessee's not punted. The offense can move the ball if they can just hold on to it. That's right. We haven't seen Mr. Leverton on the field except in warm-ups. 31 to 6 Tennessee on top coming in here favored by 42 next week unbeaten and excited Arkansas will come in and they should be ranked well the polls will be out tomorrow they should be ranked somewhere around eighth or ninth. Penn State got pounded today by Michigan so they'll be dropping on out of the top 10. That young lady's not lacking for enthusiasm. Peerless Price is deep. Waiting for the kick. Pretty good one taken at the three yard line. Looking for room. Gets out across the 20 to about the 24. Peerless Price returning it for Tennessee. 20 yards on the return. Four plays on the UAB drive. Gallego 36 yards out. Don't see many minus yards drives that score, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> That's what happened, though. Penalty. Defense. 
but he has the leg enough to get it there. 31 to 6, Tennessee's offense going to work here. They run the reverse. And still running for a first down is Peerless Price. Kind of an end around situation. It covers 12 yards. And most of all, it gives UAB something more to think about. Not nice timing. You really got to have good timing when you have a receiver come from that far out and, and run a reverse or an end around with him. They had nice timing, and of course, Price has got great speed. Tennessee looking now at a first and ten situation with the ball at the 35. Pass out here in the flat. It's complete. And running room for Sean Bryson up to midfield and maybe a half yard beyond midfield. A little swing job out of the backfield and Sean Bryson with good hands and good speed. Nice throw but T it was a time not to float the, the swing pass. That was a time to put a little something on it because there was a defender close. He put something on it and gave Bryson a chance to catch it and make the move on the defender. Nice job by T Martin. Tennessee now a few inches into UAB territory. T hands off to his tailback Travis Henry and Henry gets pretty good yardage across the 45 down to about the 44 yard line. Monroe made the stop for UAB the Blazers. Not much trouble right now for Tennessee's offensive line to control uh, the line of scrimmage that that that's about as as good a stop as UAB's made the second half and it still gained four or five yards. Tennessee on the move. T throws out in the flat complete again and Jermaine Copeland turns it into a pretty good play as he gets another first down it would appear. There's Jermaine man who can make things happen after the catch. Just quick throw get it out give your receiver time to do something. Picks up the first down. First and 10 on the 39 yard line of UAB. Jermaine, two catches, 20 yards. Pretty easy to average that out. Heavily favored balls moving with the football. T wants to air it out long. Got a man off his fingertips. Could not quite hold it, Sean Bryson. <laughs> Excuse me for interrupting. I never saw anybody break any more wide open down the sidelines. I tell you, uh, just uh, maybe slightly overthrew him, but but uh, uh, here you go. Great play call, going short side of the field, and Bryson Blake breaks wide open down the sidelines, and maybe short arms it a little bit. Should have had it. Tell you what. Uh, nice throw by T. Sean. Nice call. He's 14 of 18 for 186 yards now and should have had a lot more that uh, Sean will wake up tonight thinking about that one. Here's nice running by Travis Henry still going and got to the yard marker. Might not have got it. We'll wait and see where they spotted but just good second effort by Travis Henry. UAB cornerbacks and safeties have been very busy tonight. They've had to make most of the plays. Realizing this is not the best defense Tennessee's played against David Cutcliffe is still calling a fine fine ball game. He's, he's got the right call. Sixth play on the drive. They're about a yard shy of the first down. And they give it to the big man and he pounds straight ahead. He should have it. They drive him back but I think forward motion got it. Philip Crosby 245 pound fullback. Number 21 in your screen there. Gonna be close. He didn't get the best spot in the world. I think actually he got his forward motion got a little further than that. So it's fourth down and inches. Tennessee will go for it. Leading 31 to 6. They're not about to attempt a field goal or punt in this situation. UT 4 of 5 on fourth down to conversions. The give. Is Henry and he's twisting and if he gets a good spot he's got it. It's Crosby. I'm sorry. Philip Crosby. Oh, 
nice effort by Crosby. They don't even bother to measure on this one. Take a look at the second effort by Crosby here. Hits in, spins off, keeps it alive. If you see that formation again and, and the way UAB crowded in, be an easy time to get outside or just flip it over the top and, and an easy score. They had everybody on the line of scrimmage. Tennessee got two wide outs on the right side. Give us to the fake to the tailback. Beautiful fake, beautiful throw again by T. Martin to Jermaine Copeland. Great fake. He had me for a second there. It, read, it covers 23 yards. Nice play fake. And then he waits and puts the nice soft touch, throws over the defender. T looks like he's got a really good feel of when to when to put it in there hard and, and when to float it over. So Tennessee's got the ball at the seven yard line. First and goal at the seven. And off this time is to Henry and he keeps sliding and slashing through there inside the five to the four yard line before he is dragged down by UAB. Second down now for Tennessee. They put it at the four yard line. Time they might want to try to put T on the corner, rolling out, give him a run pass option of some kind. I haven't seen much running from T tonight. They give it again to the big man, and he is really submarined down there at about the two yard line. Travis Henry. Carrying the ball. Take a look at the nice, replay. Nice defensive play. Brian Smith, their top tackler. Good play. Took on the blocker and made the tackle. Third down conversions now two of six. This is third down and three. Smith's good play. Prevented any further damage. Here's T rolling. They gave him the option and he threw it a little too high. So it becomes a fourth down and three situation. And Hall is coming on, I believe. Crowd wants him to go for the six rather than the three, but we're going to take the sure thing here. 339, still quite a bit of time. We're in the third quarter. 31 to 6. Remember, they probably need to win by 42 or more to impress the computers. Scott puts it down. Hall puts it up and puts it through. Jeff Hall, once again successful with a short field goal. It's 34 now to 6 in favor of the balls. And the fireworks. Here at Neyland after every score. Probably be interesting to see how UAB chooses to attack now. We're, we're late in the third quarter. It's a, it's a 28 point difference. Are they going to come out and just open up and throw, which would give Tennessee a chance for turnovers and, and to maybe blow the score up? Or will UAB stick with their game plan of, of running the option and trying to use up some clock and uh, keep the score more respectable? That was a long drive to only come away with three, so really a little bit of a shot in the arm for the UAB defense. To, to shut Tennessee down inside the 10, definitely so. Thus far. Everybody likes to be on TV. <laughs> uh, red light comes on, so <laughs> do the antics. <laughs> Let's see if Jeff kicks it away from Gallery again. Gallery has had some success returning the ball tonight. Some pretty good returns. The last time they kicked to the right, to Hall's right, to Thatch. Thatch and Gallery are standing back at about the four-yard line. is hard at work on the sidelines for UAB. Here's Hall's kick and he goes to Thatch once again his best kick of the night. It's a yard deep in the end zone. Thatch brings it out of there and he's got pretty good room again. This time he's up to the 28 again. The 
Tennessee's had one kick tonight where the coverage was good. Otherwise, it has not been good. Dominique Stevenson made the stop. Should have had him, Tim, around the 18-yard line. Looked like Andre James was going to nail him at about the 15, and, and he just slipped by him. Gerald Griffin there on the special teams and plays some safety for Tennessee. In on the stop. Dixon still going at quarterback. He used that motion again. Tennessee's waiting for it right in the middle and stuffs it up pretty good. Raynock there for one. Tennessee has uh, made some changes in the secondary. They have their whole second uh, team secondary in lot. Tad Golden. Somebody's just come on to, to D'Angelo Lloyd is in there now. He was in on that stop, as a matter of fact. Miles is in at fullback now for UAP. They have used uh, four fullbacks here tonight. So that's one area where they do have a little depth. Here's the give, or the quarterback keeps it, put it in the belly of the fullback. Well, he stepped it in there and got it in there to Octavius Miles. I thought he pulled it back out, but he didn't, and Miles got a little bit of yardage out of it. A little more than you'd want after the first hit. It's pretty much Dominic nice belly Stevenson. play coming out. Juggles it, but they keep keep driving. Raynock there. Pretty Good leg power, though. With the exception of Raynock, a second defense. But they need to be accountable, as Coach Fulmer said. So it now is third down and two. Quarterback comes down the line, pitches last second. I believe he got his first down. He did. He got across the marker. Lucius Foster took the pitch, and it was played pretty well that time by UAB. Oh, the notorious wave has started. But at least they're doing it while Tennessee's on defense. <laughs> They've been known to do it here while the balls were on offense, and that is a definite no-no. But it's homecoming, so we can excuse it, I guess. Dixon now looking at a first and ten with the ball at his own 40-yard line. Tennessee with a lot of number two people in there. Let's see how they play it. They pitch it wide. Missed that tackle. And got positive yardage out of it again. Octavius Miles. Being chased down by Roger Alexander, number 38. Alexander, Alexander does a nice job making the quarterback pitch, but Dominique Stevenson took a little bit the wrong angle on the outside pursuit. Alexander was fast enough to turn and come back and make the play. Positive yardage, though. It's now second down and two. Total yards. UAB first half and the second half they're picking this up though. Got a little tempo going here now. Not much on this. Octavius Miles hit by Roger Alexander. A linebacker listed as 220. That may be stretching it a bit. Watson Brown watching his offense now move down the field. He's answered our question. They're coming out and running right at them, trying to just stick with their, their game plan and, and keep Tennessee from having easy opportunities that they might get off the passing game. You've got maybe a half a yard or so more than I thought, or we've got a real good spot. It's close enough to measure. It's short by that much. So it'll be third down and inches. 34 to 6. Tennessee leading with under a minute to go in quarter number three. UAB a little better perhaps than their record indicates as Tim pointed out earlier had Nebraska leading them 24 to 7 I believe it was late in the ball game Tim and then they Nebraska got a couple of scores late. Third down conversions, four for 10, 40% for the Blazers. And here comes another one. I believe he got it. He only needed inches, and looks like the sneak might have got it. Number 40 there is Ratliff getting up from the pile. It's uh, kind of sad commentary to say it, but every time they run, run and get a first down, run a few more points uh, or a few more minutes off the clock, it slows Tennessee's ability to run up points and, and impress the pollsters. Tennessee needs to get them stopped and, and get, get back and get in that end zone. They're 
They're calling out for a measurement. I think Watson thought it should have been waived a first down without the chains, but boy, you see how close. First down and 10 to go. Ball just inches across midfield and Tennessee territory, UAB. Tennessee's run more starters back in the, in the game up front now. First still, down, still UAB the second nine. secondary. Tennessee 19. But UAB driving right here. 20, this will be the last play of this quarter. Quarterback steps back, keeps it on a draw, gets big yardage down to the 35 yard line. Gerald Griffin in the secondary made the stop 15 yards on the quarterback draw. UAB's doing a nice job attacking, spreading the defense out, then running that quarterback option. Kind of a draw. That's the end of the third quarter here in Knoxville, Tennessee. On this cool November night, homecoming 98, the Volunteers leading 34 to 6, but UAB driving with the football. Tennessee trying to keep them out of the end zone. Actually, the Vols probably need to add two or three more touchdowns here to uh, please the pollsters and the computers this weekend. Nice, nice job by UAB. This is probably their best drive of, of the night. Uh, they've just kept the ball. They've run the option. They've run the dive play. They've had more success running inside than anything else, and, and they're staying with it. They're not getting away from their game plan at all. Not much opportunity for Tennessee to blitz a whole lot tonight, uh, Tim, because they're not throwing that much. That's exactly right. Even behind, they're, they're content to run this wishbone type uh, or, or option type offense, and it keeps Tennessee's, and it takes away some of the ability of Tennessee to make big plays and, and perhaps get turnovers. So we'll see how it plays out. Tennessee needs to bow their necks. Yardage breakdown for the uh, Balls 148 rushing 208 passing for a grand total of 356 at this point at the end of the third quarter. All right, we're set to go for the final 15. Philip Fulmer looking on. He wants to keep UAB out of the end zone. Dixon has gone all the way at quarterback. Lone running back three receivers at the top of the screen one at the bottom he pitches. Tennessee strings it out real well. Dominic Stevenson did a nice job bringing down Octavius Miles. Raynock there also. Daniel Dixon is going to need a very large ice pack when this game's over. He took a shot that time from Sean Ellis as he pitched the ball. A nice defense stringing it out. You'll get another look at it here. Bam. Good defense stringing it out. Or look at Raynock move. Dominique Stevens Dominic also. showing some ability at outside linebacker. No gain, so UAB looking at a second down, maybe even lost a half a yard. Tennessee jams it up once again. This time they were not fooled with the motion. Lucius Foster is hit by Ramzur. Zur, who has filled in pretty that, good. This is that backside line. trap or reverse again. This time it was uh, Thompson who was coming on the backside, and Raynock didn't get fooled. Raynock got him by the ankle. Ramzur brought him down, but Raynock really stopped him. Ninth play of the drive, third down and 13. So we should see some air action right here. Dixon rolling, trying to get away from the pressure. Got a man wide open. Still fighting for yardage is Mallon, Darius Mallon. 16 yards and another first down. Andre Lott finally brought him down. Nice, nice roll away from the blitz. Good throw by Dixon. Not very good coverage by Tennessee. Tennessee has, has while they substituted up front, they've kept their second team uh, secondary in this entire drive. Uh, obviously, Philip Fulmer wants to give them some experience under game conditions. He 
wasn't happy with his second team against South Carolina. There's a little dive play for a couple of yards by Octavius Miles. He said uh, he holds them responsible, Tim, just like the first unit. They're getting an opportunity. Look like we almost got a fumble on the handoff here. Look like Dixon might want to pull that one out, but the fullback wanted to run it. <laughs> fullback one out. Ron Green was reaching for him there. Reaching for the ball, it appeared. Trying to strip it. Second down and seven to go. Not much on this one, but it's positive, not minus yards. It'll bring up a big third down. Octavius Miles getting a good workout here in the second half. Five foot ten. 218 pound sophomore. It may not be the greatest thing to impress the pollsters, but it it's, uh, impresses me that, that the defensive staff has played a lot of football players on this drive and several others here in the second half. These guys need, they're going to need these guys down the stretch, and they're getting guys like Granzow and Stevenson work. I think they got the first unit backs back. Defensive backs have returned. Third down. Third, third down conversion or attempt in this drive. UAB calls a timeout to make sure they have the right play. I think the first unit defensive backs have returned, uh, Tim, so Tennessee is definitely trying to keep them out of here. They did. They are playing uh, Granzow and, and Dominique Stevenson at outside linebackers, and, and uh, Granzow, frankly, had a very good football game last week in South Carolina. Tennessee's defensive huddle here. They're getting the calls from upstairs. That's Dan Brooks with a cap on backwards there, shouting the instructions out to his defenders. Talking to Dominique there. 11 minutes and 39 seconds of football left this night at Neyland Stadium. Volunteers 34, UAB 6. Right now, probably not enough points and a strong enough opponent to keep them in second place, but that's going to change from week to week, as UCLA can tell you. They went from first to third real quick. Tessie needs to stop this drive and then at least put one more score on the board. Yeah, I agree. There's, there's your total. We're, Tennessee is less than one point ahead of UCLA. Football! Tennessee's got it. They pick it up. They're going to run with it. This is Sean Ellis. Shades of the Auburn game. Big Sean this time is caught. He's lost a half a step of speed. <laughs> the I believe he's got <laughs> He didn't quite have the convoy that he had at Auburn. He, Great he looked, play. Though. He looked good for 35 yards, and then that monkey got on his back, didn't he? 64 yards. Quarterback just never had it. Look at that move. Look at that move. He thinks he's a tailback. Watch his cutback. <laughs> hey. He's going to be uh, asking for playing time next week on the other side of the ball. Pushing his blockers along. <laughs> Punish that last tackle. Rumbling, rumbling. Downfield, Sean Ellis. So Tennessee with a huge turnover there. Big turnover by UAB and a great job by Tennessee. Ooh, that was close. He almost made a big mistake. Bush right in the middle of that thing, and we could have seen the same type running in the other direction by a big lineman. Bush had it for a fleeting second. T15 of 21 now for 208 yards. Is that final? Fourth quarter, Michigan State is leading Ohio State. That's the reason for the roar from the crowd. 25 to 24 in the fourth quarter, Michigan State is leading. Here's T with a draw. Pulls it down and runs it down across the 15 to the 14-yard line. 
the announcement excited the crowd right at the long, wrong time while Tennessee was trying to change the play at the round of scrimmage. <laughs> to help Bobby hold off on those scores. <laughs> Bobby Denton at work. He got excited. He heard that score and wanted to tell everybody about it, I believe. Tennessee spreads the field. Two receivers wide right, two left. T goes into the gun. Shotgun, third and seven, looking for something. It's not there. He's going to lose yardage. Probably bring out Jeff Hall again. Not Tennessee's best series of downs. Crowd a little restless again here. They needed to go in and score right there, and they had a golden opportunity to do it. That was a great defensive play and a great play by Sean Ellis, but it was an F for the offense on that particular series. First time they've gone into the shotgun tonight, and it did not work. All right, Jeff Hall, it will be spotted at the 27-yard line. We're closer maybe to the 28, making about a 38-yard field goal. It looks good. It is good. Jeff Hall, once again, splits them. Comes with 10-29 remaining in the contest, and Tennessee goes up 37-6. to uh, Interesting score announcement, Bob. Uh, they, uh, Michigan State, I believe, is a 25-point underdog to Ohio State. Something like that. Uh, should Ohio State win, it'll be interesting to see what happens to their ratings uh, in, in some of the polls. Glad you could join us tonight wherever you are viewing across our state, in some cases out of state for alumni groups. It's been a happy homecoming, a beautiful weekend in East Tennessee. Absolutely gorgeous. A little chilly tonight, but not that uncomfortable. The fans came prepared and they're staying for the most part. Just a few have started scattering out of some of the upper section, but about 90 percent still here. Hey, our ten Tennessee's a, well, two points by this this uh, uh, rating the, the, this past week behind Ohio State. Should Ohio State lose, could Tennessee vault to number one? That could happen. Might need one more score tonight, though. Touchdown. The odds are overwhelming against the four combined to going unbeaten. With Michigan, the last I heard winning big today, that could really set up a big game at the end of the season for Ohio State. Jeff Hall's kick. Receiver fell down at the 16-yard line. They kicked it away from Gallery and kicked it again to Cedric Thatch, who had a pretty good return his last time, but this time he slipped and fell. He was about to be hit, it appeared, anyway. There's Miles, one of the youngsters who's a real burner for Tennessee. Should be a star in the future here. Looks like the crowd wants to get back in it now that they've heard that Ohio State score, Bob. <laughs> I think Alabama's leading LSU tonight. 28 to 16. Pitch down the line and he got to the corner and turned it. Pretty nice job that time by UAB. Lucius Foster. Alabama's 20 to 16 lead is with two minutes left in the ball game. Boy, LSU is a mystery team, aren't they, this year, Tim? Uh, very disappointing to their fans and and, and uh, very much not the team everybody thought they were going to be. This would be their fifth defeat. Uh, an incredible thing to think of preseason. You wonder how much heart is left there since the season has gone away from them. Dixon looking out a second and five. Gives it in the middle. Nice bit of running by Lucius Foster. Or some positive yardage. Looks like Tennessee's playing a lot of second uh, second team defense. Starting tackles. Darwin but, Walker made the stop. He is still in there. Starting tackles, but 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 they've got their reserves in at linebacker, at defensive ends, and in the second. 
Nice job filling the hole, but but he doesn't quite uh, uh, make the tackle. All right, it's third down and two, and there's going to be a timeout to talk about it. Key situation for Tennessee right here. They need to stop UAB and then get some more points on the board. Right now it's 37 to 4. Normally you would say, hey, that's plenty. Let's get on out of here. But different world we live in here in 98. It very much so is. And, and interestingly, Tennessee, except for their starting defensive tackles, is playing a, a, a second unit. I would imagine somewhat they don't want any more injury to, to come to Raynock Thompson, who's had back spasms, or to Al Wilson, that middle linebacker, who obviously has had shoulder problems. Uh, but at the same time, they're giving guys, young fellas, a chance to learn and to play and to get better. And some of these guys will certainly be needed down the stretch. There's what stands between Tennessee and Atlanta. Getting to the championship game, Arkansas next week. Unbeaten and really an excited team. A, a team that both runs the ball and throws the ball well. Uh, perhaps the best combination of both of those that Tennessee's played this year. Kentucky will come in here with Couch and company piling up big yardage. Vanderbilt has been tough for Tennessee for the past two years. Remember Arkansas last year and Kentucky were both struggles on the road. Crowd gets into it now. Defense being cheered on. And good job by the defense. Did I see a flag? A yes, across the way. Linesman threw one with 9.38 to go. The clock is stopped, 37 to 6. Tennessee leading. Let's see what the infraction is here. If it's against Tennessee, it'll be a first down. Before because the snap, there was a snap infraction by the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Snap infraction, huh? I guess the center didn't snap it fast enough. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Maybe he double pumped here. That's what he did. He tilted the ball a little bit before. Uh huh. Leave Tennessee would rather have the play, but you can't. You don't have that choice. So now it becomes a third down and seven. That was a critical mistake for UAB, or it would appear to be third down conversion. Seven for 13, 54 percent for the Blazers. Dixon They're back, coming. being They're pursued, coming. fires long, and got him. Good grief. What a play. Quentin Troop. Head coach is not very happy. 27-yard uh, gain when he was running for his life. Uh, you, you, you know, sometimes you're going to play re you're going to play reserves in the secondary, and this is going to happen to you sometimes. And it's what happened here. Being pursued by Dominic Stevenson, who couldn't quite get there. The cornerback lost his man, slipped down. Corner actually fell. Dixon is coming off. Daniel Dixon is shaken up. Watson greets him on the sideline. Terrific throw he made that time. Lee Jolly is now in. There he is, number 12. Jolly takes over. He's 6'2", 195 pounds, a sophomore. Dixon was 7 out of 12 for 73 yards. And off to the tailback, trying to get outside. Not a whole lot there for Lucius Foster. As Tennessee closed it down pretty good. Boy, Philip was really, really hot about that last <laughs> third down conversion. Those things happen sometimes when you play young people, and, and, and I admire him for putting them in and giving them the opportunity, but sometimes they make mistakes when you do. Big win for Alabama tonight. It's final. Alabama 22, LSU 16 in Baton Rouge. Running Octavius Miles behind his right guard and tackle got just a little there for the balls closed him down. More substitutions. Ron Green and Billy Ratliff are going to come in at, at uh, defensive tackles as Tennessee tries to keep fresh people on the field. Number 28 there is Dominic Stevenson, who started out at Tennessee as a running back, converted to 
linebacker might be the middle linebacker next year. That's a big, big plus for the teams that will play Tennessee next year because Al Wilson will not be here. He will be in the NFL. Clock ran down. I don't know if they, they got the timeout called in time. That's about the, what, third or fourth time tonight that UAB has let the clock run down, got caught once, and have called timeouts and the that, other times at the last second. That's their last timeout uh, with 8 8.05 to go in, in the ball game. Uh, but if they've got a chance to have a drive here, they certainly want to use the timeout. Uh, they're not going to need them at the end to try to win the game. You might as well use it now to see if you can make a first down and keep the drive alive uh, to where they can get six or, or, or three more points. Cool evening. A few folks have decided to check out. <laughs> well, we've still got eight minutes and five seconds of football. Tennessee trying to win and not only win, but win impressively. The computers are the New York Times, the Seattle newspaper, and USA's Jeff Saragan computer rankings. Bob, we've got an update. Uh, nine minutes, 26 seconds left. Michigan State leads Ohio State 28 to 24. Ooh. Well, there are at least three teams tickled to death with that score. One of them is here, Tennessee. The other one is UCLA. And the other one is Kansas State. Jolly at quarterback. Third down and five. Got hit. Got his pass away. Had the man there. He dropped it. Lucius Foster. Boy, I don't know if Philip could have taken that one or not, uh, Tim. Uh, Excellent another pressure. third down conversion. Very much so. Excellent pressure by Judd Grandsell. Uh, but a nice throw by Jolly. His receiver just dropped the ball at uh, back out of the backfield, Foster. Lucius Foster has been a pretty solid receiver for him when they needed it this year, but not this time. Beyond Grant back. Here's the punt. It's a nice one this time. He signals fair catch, hoping it will get in the end zone. It does get to the checkerboard. 49 yards on that kick. Lee Carter had a couple of, of those 25 yarders tonight, but this time he got a good foot into it. T. Martin remains in the game with 7.51 to go. Okay, let's uh, join John Ward for a couple of calls here. 80,645. Tennessee on offense into the I formation. In motion, Copeland from right to left. The pitch will go to the tailback, and that's Stevens at the corner. 25 out of bounds, stopping the clock after a pickup of five yards on the play. And Bill, Tennessee is thinking touchdown. They have to be thinking touchdown. I think so, and uh, rightfully so. Uh, they've got plenty of time. You've got seven minutes, but it, it would certainly, I would feel more comfortable about it if they get another, uh, at least one more touchdown. 37 to 6 is the score with Tennessee leading. Six points for UAB coming on two field goals, both coming after Tennessee turnovers. Second down and five. Stevens is the tailback, tied into the right side. This will be Martin off play action, looking across the middle, being chased and being sacked. Dumped back of the 18-yard line. And here comes Byron Thomas getting his fifth sack of the year. And so Tennessee is faced with a third down long situation. Credit the defensive secondary that took away all of the possible receivers. And so Tennessee will have it now, third down and 12 yards to go. As the balls shuttle receivers in and out, and to the left side will go Wilson. As Tennessee pulls Bryson to a wing back behind the tackle on the right side. Martin against a two man rush. Fakes to Stevens. Looks across the middle. Pass complete. 30 to the 35. Copeland to the 40. Out of bounds. He's the man in the slot. Coming across the middle. Copeland makes the catch by Ison. All right. It's been a big day for John Ward, and he has been honored today and certainly deserves it with a special luncheon here today. 
lot of big name people were here. A lot of former players, former coaches, country music stars. And the proceeds from that go to the scholarship fund, the athletic, as well as the mass communications department. John in his final year as voice of the Vols, along with Bill Anderson, who should not be overlooked. Bill has done a magnificent job, too, down through the years. Here's a pitch out on the side. Tennessee gets Travis Stevens on the edge, and he gets across the 45 to the 47-yard line before he is knocked down by UAB. About four players over there to bring him down. Got a marker down, though. Late flag looked like it came from a skirmish between uh, Peerless Price and, and a defender, and I guess they're going to call Peerless for holding. Tennessee looks like they're retreating, expecting a penalty. The good part of this one is that the, uh, the flag occurred downfield, and if they take from the point of the foul, uh, you'll have second holding, holding, 12 the or something like the run, that. 10-yard penalty, and repeat, repeat, first down. 14. Brings it back to the 37-yard line. There's Peerless. who got caught on that one. So it makes it now a 15 yards situation to, to go for a first down. First and 15. Fake. Throw incomplete intended for Cedric Wilson. Woken up by Omar Parker. Nice play. Very nice play on the corner. He's uh, number two cornerback on the left side behind James Williams played that one low like a number one corner he did he, he it was a deep sideline cut and and uh, it was a well thrown ball Parker just had good coverage that time let's see if they go to the air again I would suspect so it's still 15 yards to go for the first it's second down got good protection got time got a man and got a first down from peerless price Peerless makes up for the hold quite nicely. Bob, UAB has played without, without a center fielder a good bit of the night. Uh, they're, 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 cheating the, they're cheating their safety over so that Peerless just has one guy to beat, and when he does, open across the middle. They're not playing a free safety down the middle very much, and Tennessee's taking advantage of it by throwing over the middle pretty consistently. First down with the ball at the 36-yard line of UAB. He's going to the air again. T looks over the situation. Got a man. Got him. Complete. Down to the 20-yard line. Peerless Price again. Nice touch. He, he lays this one out softly. The man's open. You don't want to over, overcook your throw. T has a nice touch on that one again. Price, uh, six catches for 104 yards tonight. Two receivers at the top of the screen, one at the bottom. Not much out of that one. Travis Stevens just couldn't find any running room there. That last catch by Price moves him to number three on the all-time UT career reception list. 100. 25 yards ahead of T.D. Woods. All right, Tennessee now is looking at a second down and nine situation with the ball at the 20-yard line. High formation. They pitch to the tailback. Travis Stevens looking for blocking. It's not there. He dropped the football again. His second fumble of the night. And again, UAB falls on it. Well, Bob, Bob's second effort is most important, and Travis Stevens has got a lot of that. But if you don't hold the football, you're not going to play as much. And, and he, he gives a good second effort, bounces off, but that's not much of a tackle to, to cause a fumble. That's just a hand coming in there. You've got to protect the football. You can beat you can beat Adrian. UAB without it, but you're not going to beat Arkansas and Kentucky laying the football on the ground like that. You've got to right. improve that. Adrian Singleton was the man coming up with it. All right, Tennessee's defense goes back to work with 4.55 to go. 
They missed a golden opportunity to get into the end zone there. They have missed two golden opportunities. Nothing on that play for the fullback, Corey Conley. Ron Green was the primary stopper there. Tim, they've had a chance twice down here to put scores on the board that would put them into the high 40s and would really look good, but it hasn't happened. It's not happened, and unfortunately, Ron Green is limping off. He's had knee problems in the past, and he's limping off the field. I haven't seen number 70 out there tonight, Rashad Moore. If he had, he may have to play the true freshman now if Green has any sort of an injury that would keep him out of next week's game. UAB with a second and 12. Little trap to the tailback, and he's still running. Up to the 40, the 50, down into Tennessee territory, and finally chased down Lucius Foster. It was Derek Edmonds who finally caught him. 39 yards. Uh, good second effort by Foster. Poor tackling by Tennessee. This last five minutes has not been impressive for Tennessee at all. Definitely has not. They've gone into snooze and, and it's going it's to cost them. There's number 70, Rashad Moore, who is in school now and eligible to play. But will he play? That remains a question. Probably not tonight. They get to the corner and get a little bit of yardage out of it. Lucius Foster's had a busy night. Yeah, Eleven is, carries for 83. They've, they've stuck with their game plan coming out. This is a little bit different of an option. A uh, little bit different look on the option where the quarterback just jumps back and then takes off down the line. <laughs> there is a monitor behind us that has the Ohio State game on it right now and the crowd in front of the, us here is looking at that right now instead of the field. Lucius Foster once again and Will Overstreet made the stop. Number 90. Will Overstreet I think has a great future at Tennessee. He's going to be a heck of a football player. Absolutely. 6'3 and a half, 255, ran 11 100 uh, meters in the Mississippi High School uh, track meet. Uh, you don't see that very often. This this guy's got a great future. And you saw it there running down the, the, the tailback on the sideline to make the play. It becomes a third down and five. Here's where Tennessee's defense with three minutes and two seconds must dig in and stop this. 37 to six. But they don't need to give up more points. Again, we refer to the computer. Ooh, ooh. Don't know if UAB moved, but Tennessee definitely was offside. Might have offsetting penalties there. Look like both of them are moving. Frustrated Watson Brown talking to his team and to the officials. University of Alabama, Birmingham. Before the snap, the defense violated the neutral zone rules, causing the offensive man to move. By rule, that's a foul against the defense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. That's a rule that's been around for a couple of years now. Uh, new one on me. I always thought the offensive man had to take the lick before you, got, you <laughs> yeah. called off sides. All right, it's now a third down and one with the penalty. So it was a big penalty. Quarterback keeps it. He's got yardage. He's going to score. Touchdown, UAB. Lee Jolly. 33 yards on the quarterback keeper. And the UAB fans who are here, and they're staying, by the way, across the way, Right to the end of this game, they've got something to cheer about here. It becomes a 37 to 12 ball game. They're going for the one, not the two point conversion. And uh, Maurice, there's the extra point. It is good. And it's now a 37 to 13 ball game. Bob, the uh, bowl championship series creates a real interesting scenario now. 
Tennessee's a hit 37 13. There's 236 left in the game. What do you do with the ball when you get it? You don't have much choice, I don't think. I think you've got to go for a score. Here's a look at the quarterback keeper. Nice move by Jolly right there and a missed tackle, too, by Tennessee. The drive five plays, 78 yards with 236. That much time off the clock. Uh, you're going to find uh, that the Tennessee team's attention is not going to be too hard to get in the film room, I don't think, after this ball game. And with what's happening the rest of the way around the country. 37 to 13, Tennessee leading with 236 to go in the contest. Tennessee team is still huddled with the coaches across the way. Two minutes to go in the Ohio State Michigan State game. It's still a four point lead for Michigan State. Alabama won earlier tonight, beating LSU at home. Baton Rouge, 22 to 16. Of course, earlier today, Tennessee's next opponent, Arkansas, in a driving cold rain in Fayetteville, clobbered Ole Miss 34 to nothing. The Hogs undefeated. Certainly the surprise team of the conference, maybe of the nation right now. Dwayne Goodrich is back to receive. And he catches it in the end zone had a thought of coming out of there changed his mind and the balls will set it in play at the 20 yard line two minutes and 28 seconds for the balls to get downfield normally in another year in another time tim you would just run straight ahead for a few plays here get a first down and walk out of here but now with a bowl situation the rankings the computers the computers are obviously impressed by margin of victory. Tennessee came in favored by 42. Bernie Vesey's a quarterback, so they're not going to probably attempt to go to the air much here. You figure Bernie's in primarily to run the football or hand it off, and that's what he does. Pretty positive gain by Travis Henry out to the 25-yard line. Second down and five for the balls. Beasy, two of two, 46 they, yards, not a bad season. They've let him run some bootlegs and throw off the bootleg a time or two, and he's looked good doing it. They, they might allow that here. Henry's got 14 carries tonight for 86 yards. They give it off to Henry again, and he gets the first down as he crossed the 30-yard line before the UAB defensive line drags him down. Clock still... Well, it stopped now with the first down marker at a minute 48 to go. It will restart when the chain is set, and there it goes. 37 to 13, balls leading. Coach Fulmer probably not 100% pleased with this performance here tonight. There have been some bright moments and some not so bright. Pitch back, Henry. Looking for some room, gets across the 35, maybe the 36 or 7 yard line. As Tennessee is running it out here. Homecoming crowd. They, they filled us a little bit. <laughs> Over 106,000 and probably about 75,000 remaining in here. If they're going to throw it, this would be a good time to do it. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. We've gone under a minute now, 55 seconds and counting. Bernie Vesey at quarterback for the balls. Gives it in the middle, straight ahead run by Will Bartholomew, number two fullback out of NBA in Nashville up to the 40 yard line. Looks like their intent to just run the clock out. 35 seconds and counting. A minute 51 remaining in the Ohio State and Michigan State game. It's still a 28-24 Michigan State lead, which will really shake things up in the coalition if that stands. It, well, it shake it up anyway because Ohio State's favored by 25 in that game tonight. Here's the handoff on what will be the last play of the ball game as Henry crosses the 45 to the 46-yard line. 
And that's the end of the game. Tennessee wins it 37 to 13. We'll see how that plays out now in the bowl poll, which comes out tomorrow. Of course, the first thing we have is the Associated Press Writers Broadcasters Poll and the USA Coaches Poll. And then the computers will come into play and we'll have the Bowl Coalition Championship Series ranking after that. UCLA playing on the West Coast, of course, tonight, so their score will be quite late. But Tennessee wins it by a score of 37 to 13. Don't know if this will hurt that much in the poll yet, Tim. We'll just have to wait and see. We will. It was a game where Tennessee was never threatened, obviously, but it was not uh, the blowout that some Tennessee fans expected and perhaps the pollsters, ex pollsters expected. Uh, we'll have to see how it plays out over time. Tennessee's going to have a great opportunity next week against an undefeated and high-flying Arkansas team. Arkansas will come in ranked somewhere in the top. 10. They were 10 and 11 last week. They won handily and impressively today as uh, the ball players involved in a moment of prayer here at the end of the ball game. We'll just uh, have to wait and see, but we do know that Arkansas will not be overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They're undefeated and they're playing very well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Tennessee plays next week against them. You know, Arkansas is going to be coming in here thinking they can win this football game also. We hope you've enjoyed it. We thank you for being with us. And from Knoxville, Tennessee, again, Tennessee wins 37-13. to 13. Good night, everybody.